Hey guys, it's the WalterFootball.com After Dark Show for April 14th, 2024. Uh, we're going to be uh, talking about the first Super Bowl 59 bet that I've made officially. So I uh, want to get into that. Also, the Scotty Scheffler Masters uh, uh Bet the a pro or hedge that um that I'm gonna uh reveal like what what kind of the plan is for Sunday because we bet Scotty Scheffler to win the Masters at plus four eighty and he's currently in the lead so uh like like last week hopefully it's not as stressful but we'll talk about what I'm thinking about for the hedge uh for the for the Masters um uh, also Game of Thrones rewatch uh, season two episodes six and seven I thought two fantastic episodes can't wait to talk about that and then everything else that we usually talk about on the show with Tom. Tom, um, before we get to the introduction, please hit like, subscribe, comment below, share this video, visit the link in the description for the merch store. All that would mean a lot to us. If you really want to help support the show, there's super chats. Uh, we got some great ones this week uh, from um, from Kevin. Uh, from Kevin, we got. Um, uh, $25 worth of super stickers on Tuesday uh, from SLU. We got a 444 super chat and then the Genin on uh, with $7 on Thursday. So uh, all that would, uh, all that was, is, is really appreciated. It means a lot to us because YouTube ads pay absolutely nothing. So um, if you really want to help uh, keep the show going, um, that's one way to do it. Uh, what something else you can do is buy my book. Uh, as you can see on the screen here, jerks of the college years, um, it is my third book. It is basically uh, a compilation of stories. Uh, they're kind of like written sort of like jerks of the week, maybe a little bit shorter, but uh, just all my stories from Penn State, my six years of Penn State. I met, I met a lot of crazy people there, as Tom can attest. Uh, we lived on the same floor one year, and we ran into a bunch of crazy people in that in that one year. So I have five more years worth of uh, jerks here in this book. Um, so it's available on Amazon. So that's another way to support the show. Uh, but yeah, we are joined uh, once again by Tom Quacky T. Tom, how are you? How's your week? It's been good. It's, it's it's been good, and I can attest that the, I've I've only read a little bit of the book so far, but it is it has had me laughing out loud on, on several occasions. I still think that I'm going to find myself in there. Like maybe maybe I was a person unknown to you, then you wrote about me, and, and it's, it's it's definitely not out of the question. And those of you who watch the show regularly would probably agree. But but anyhow, hey, I I didn't forget to to take something in golf. I, I took Scotty Scheffler to place in the top five. So, uh, so which I, I feel pretty good about at this point. I was at plus one of five. That was my my big play. So I'm interested to hear what your what your hedge is going to be. And you know, of course, I've got you know all sorts of of other non nonsense to get into as always. Yeah, I can't wait to get into the nonsense. Uh, might as well get into that, right? Um, uh, so uh, let's pull up the leaderboard here. Uh, Scotty Scheffler was tied heading into de- today at six under with. Um, uh, Max Homa Homa Sapien here and uh, uh, Bryson <laughs> Bryson DeChambeau. Uh, they were both, yeah, Rochambeau. Oh, Rochambeau, you for it. It was uh, they're both uh, six <laughs> under, and um, I, I saw like Scotty Shuffler went to like eight under at one point. Then he went down to five under, and then he he went back up to seven under. Colin Morikawa kind of entered the conversation. Uh, or like entered the chat here. He's he's uh, he had a three under today. Is six under now. Uh, Homa is at five, and then Aberg at four. It's funny that's like we have a seven six five four three two. Um, and I feel like a- anyone at three and under can win this. Uh, still, you know, if Scotty Scheffler could have a bad day for sure. And then what if Rochambeau goes uh, four under or something like that? It's a tough course. There, there's, it's funny. There are only twelve guys who are under par right now um like the wind wind is howling there um a lot of guys have like had disastrous days like if you scroll down here like um yeah, vj singh too. had plus 10 hadwin had plus 10 today like oh. uh these guys all made the cut too and like they they just like imploded look at kirk kiyama he was he was even he was at, as at par entering saturday and he went 10 over um so just a brutal course, one of the toughest courses, the Masters. I mean, it's a major, so uh, you're going to have a lower score than usual. L- last year's winning score was 12 under with John Rahm, uh, but then second place was eight under. So um, I feel like the winning score might be like 10 under and maybe nine under, and I think Scotty Scheffler w- will still win it. Um, but but uh, do we, were you going to say something? Yeah, I, I like to see that though. There have been a couple, and I don't follow it nearly as, as closely as you do, of course, but it's like some of these, it's like they're minus 24 and stuff. That's like a mini golf score. Why why is it just this course? I mean, it's the Masters, so I imagine it's, you know, explain to the <laughs> explain it to me like I'm six. Like it's just a tougher course, right? 
Yeah, well, like, you know, those 24 unders could be uh, 26 unders if the stupid clown face uh, didn't get them. Um, <laughs> oh, but... and, the, and the windmill, yeah. The exactly. No, the, the dreaded windmill. You always hit, you always hit that stupid pain. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, a lot of, uh, a lot of like the easier courses, they have like they're either shorter or they have like wider uh, fairways where like you don't hit the ball into the rough too much. Um, and also they have like uh, easier greens to putt on. I've, I've heard, obviously I've never been to Augusta, but I, I've heard that um, the greens here is like putting is like on glass um, instead of like just grass. Uh, that's a, a glass with an L, not an R. So like basically w when you're putting the ball, like the ball like goes super far, um, like rather than, you know, just, just regular. Um, and so that, that trips a lot of people up. I know that, um, Siwoo Kim's like someone I had, uh, for a bet and then he made the cut. Um, uh, but he had like, he had a disastrous, um, where is Siwoo Kim? Um, he is, oh, he's seven over right now. Um, he had a fine day one and then day two, he had like, he was like four over. And then on the last hole, he had like a three foot putt. And then he, he actually like double bogeyed because he missed it twice. Cause like, it's so hard to putt here. Um, it also like a lot of the holes are very far. So you need to be, uh, like, you, have, you need to have a lot of power off the tee. Um, and so, uh, and, and like, once you do that, you have to have a good approach game, uh, to get it to the greens and then putting on the greens is really tough. And like, it's, it, it's, it says a lot that Scheffler's doing well because he had issues putting earlier, um, uh, like I guess like last year for the most part, and then slightly earlier last year uh, or this year rather. Um, but it sounds like he's fixed that part of his game and it looks, I mean, this, the past four tournaments have kind of set it all here. So uh, like, like I said, I think that he will win this at probably like 10 under uh, maybe nine under. Um, but I think Morikawa Homa are definitely live to win. Aberg has so much talent, but he's, he's just a rookie. Like, can he go up against these veterans and beat them? Like, maybe, but I don't think so. The Shambo, uh, I know that um, what's what's his name? Uh, I think Tony from a uh, um, Rump Your Sports bet him at like forty to one or something like that. So he looked like he was live, but he had a bad day. Uh, I I think that um, I think like let's look at the odds here. So um, this is something we're gonna live bet. Like right now, it's kind of congested right here, so I think it's hard to bet. Um, if we get a really good number of one of these guys, I think I might pull the trigger. So like right now more, I think more Kawa is, um, would be the favorite to upset Shuffler. If, if someone were to upset Shuffler, uh, Homa's really talented too. And like I said, Aber is a rookie. So I think it's up to these three. Um, I think like one of them could implode tomorrow though. though. Um, and so if like, if like Shuffler is going head to head with one of these guys, uh, tomorrow, I'm going to post, uh, my live bet, um, or my live hedge on Twitter. Um, and then I'll try to post it on the site. But it'll depend if I'm with the kids or not, if I can do it on the site. But it'll be on Twitter for sure. But, like, I, I just want, like, some separation here because I'm know like I'm pretty confident one of these guys is going to drop off. But I'm also confident Scheffler's going to win. I, I just want a, a slight hedge. It's not going to be anything substantial. It's going to be, like, one unit or something like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, that, that's my plan for now is just, like, monitor um, – how they're they're golfing tomorrow i think they're about they're, like they're probably going to tee off at like 2 30 eastern these all these four um at the top so yeah just uh ju just make sure you're following live and uh, i'll definitely post my hedge at some point tomorrow so it's not like it's not like last week where uh batia had this huge lead and uh we, we were pretty comfortable at least until the end um but it's it's a lot different now because it's so congested here like i said it's like one stroke separating all these guys it's 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 pretty tough right now to hedge yeah, it's been a while since I've seen it that close, like I was saying with the mini golf scores. For me, me personally, I mean, I probably, hey, what's up, love to eat. Um, it's, it's for me personally, I mean, like I said, I took Scheffler in the top five. I feel pretty good about that. Regardless, yeah. I mean, fifth place is currently my, he would have to have a pretty bad day. I yeah, do you see, do you see these odds here? He's 95.4% yeah, yeah, to go to top five. Say, yeah, yeah. 90, so I, I think I'll just, I'll just let that be. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't, yeah, there's no, it's hard to hedge that. Um but right, uh right but I, like I don't, I don't think i'll take like another player to well maybe i should i don't know no nah, I, I think i'll just let it go with what i have yeah um he's 55.2 percent to win you have morikawa 20 percent homa at 8.7 and then you have aberg uh and then it just decreases uh like exponentially after these guys shoffley is kind of interesting um I, I didn't say this on the tuesday show but i said like i was thinking this and i just didn't get to it I was like, if, if there's a person I would bet to finish second place, it's Shoffley. Because, uh, like, that's all he does is finish second. Like, if you look at results, uh, or he's like five, second, fourth, third. Like, he's, he's like, 
he's always or here we go last year second second fourth third fourth yeah. this guy never wins this guy never wins but he's like always like in the top four uh it, it's it's pretty amazing he's, he's always like the uh like the um the, the, like the top brides maybe he's never he's never actually the bride um <laughs> <laughs> he gets like one of the happy Gilmore checks afterwards. Still, yes. Though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's <laughs> no, I'm sure. I'm sure he is taking some huge, huge, huge checks. But wait, can you, can you bet that? I mean, you could still do like top, top three or, or top, probably top five. Yeah. You could sure. do top what, five. What is he now? Fifth? Uh, yeah. He's, fifth yeah. He's tied for six right now. Um, you could do finishing positions right now. Uh, it's, uh they only have top 10 here. But um, Shoffley's minus three forty, so that's nothing special. Um, I was hoping they'd have a top five that they don't at the moment. That's weird. I mean, maybe in another sports book, you could probably find it. Um, there we go. Winner without Scheffler. There you go. That's uh, Shoffley is uh, twelve to one. It's not bad. I think I'd consider that actually. He's only uh, he's only four back. That's not like it's not inconceivable that um, that Morikawa can go. You know two over tomorrow and finish a minus four. Homa goes two over, finishes three. Aberg probably goes par, uh, finishes a minus four. And Shoffley goes three under and finishes minus five. That could, that could definitely happen. So he's, he's what, 12 to one to do that? It's actually, I think that's a decent bet. Yeah, so just, just to clarify, that's saying without, you know, so it, basically if Scheffler wins, it's whoever whoever second place. Is what what this bet? Is. Or or the outright winner too? Yeah. Um, right, it says win, right, winner right. with win, yeah winner without Shuffler. Uh, any players who withdraw after completing? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, what Shuff, 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 Am I even saying it right? Shuff. Xander Shuffley. Yeah, uh, he's twelve to one. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I think that's not bad. It's not bad. Um, yeah, I think that those are great odds. I think I I I've never I think I'd consider like a unit on that. Maybe I, I might do it actually. I'll I'll announce on Twitter afterward. I'll think about it, but um or maybe I'll try to find a better number too. Um, but twelve to one seems pretty decent to me for like someone who's definitely gonna be in contention, I think. Like he's yeah. he's one of the best golfers in the world, like I said, and, and like you don't have to worry about him choking because you don't need him to beat Shuffler, you just need him to finish second place. Have you ever played golf yourself? Um, I used to, uh, I used to do chip and putting and stuff like that. And, um, I, well, mini golf, uh, I have conquered uh, goofy golf at the, uh, the New Jersey, uh, ocean city boardwalk. Um, but no, actually I, my, uh, my wife asked me one time, this is like six years ago. She's like, do you want golf clubs? I'm like, I would like to golf, you know? Um, I would like to learn. And like, I did take some lessons from a friend who, um, he golfed in college and so, like he he showed me how to how to like uh, swing and whatnot, and uh, like we we're in the driving range. Um, and so, but that that was like I was in my early twenties back then. And so I'm like, I'm like you know what? I don't know if my back could hold up because my back is pretty bad. And my wife's mm -hmm. like, oh, to take a practice swing without any clubs. I'm like, okay. And I, I like I was standing in my kitchen. I like I took a practice swing, and like my back was like, Oh my God. And like, oh, <laughs> oh, no. I was like, so yeah, I like, yeah, I forget the golf gloves. I can't, I definitely can't do that. But like when you, <laughs> well, sorry to hear that. That's I, I've, I've only ever gone to top golf. I've never actually, I've never played actual golf other than, than putt putt, which I, I would say my record in, in putt putt is pretty, is pretty good. And I, I mean, I, I maybe do it once a year. How, I mean, have, how many times have you played putt putt and, and do you think you have a winning record? Oh, you like mini golf? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I used to. Well, I used to go to the Jersey Shore all the time, um, and it was. Um, what was it like? Is it's it twenty twelve, I believe, or maybe twenty thirteen? Uh, it was one of those years. I, I was at uh, Ocean City, um, and I was I was there by myself um, because I was waiting for my sister and her um, and her boyfriend to come in. Um, and it was like the next day. So like, I was just there for the first night by myself. And so I just like nothing to do on my own. So I, I did two. So I do two things, uh, when I'm at ocean city, like my, I used to do this, like before I had a family, like back in my dumb uh, drinking days. Um, I used to, uh, I used to do the, the ocean city boardwalk challenge, uh, which I made up was like where you start at one end and like, you try to go to the other end as far as you can. Um, the, the trick is you have to stop at, at each each like dining place like each like restaurant or pizza place you have to stop and buy one thing there 
uh, one food item and you have to eat it and then you have to move on forward. Uh, so uh, it, that's that's what I did. I made it like two thirds of the way. Um, and then I was like, oh, man, I can't do this anymore. So, uh, <laughs> that sounds like it would be a lot of places you had to stop. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every pizza but, place, you get one slice of pizza. The thing on the menu, or you getting like a funnel cake at every stop sort of thing? Uh, no, it would be like I'll get one slice of pizza, a hot dog, french fries, something like that. So, um, that, <laughs> so like that's what I did in my boredom. That's that's what I would – that's what I did. Um, and then <laughs> – and then uh, once once oh. I was like super full, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna play some mini golf. And so uh, I went to every mini golf place just because, like, again, I had nothing to do that night. And so I golfed by myself, but like mini golf, like for like three or four hours <laughs> in a row. So uh, I felt like I got pretty good after that. Uh, but it, it's been a while. That's like been 12 years ago. So I can't. The last time I mini golfed, man, I can't even remember. Um, I think I went with my wife. Uh, we mini golfed. Um, I think she was pregnant with my son. So that was, that had, had to been like three years ago. Um, yeah, yeah. so it's, yeah, it's been a while. Um, Carmen yeah. with the five dollar super sticker. Well, thank you so thank much, you, Carmen. I re really appreciate it, Carmen. Thank you so much. If you have any, any comments, questions, yeah. we'll bump it up to the top. So, um, yeah, just really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Um, yeah, so it's been a while for me. Um, and I, th I feel like COVID changed a lot, too, because, like, we used to go to the shore all the time. And then, like, that summer was kind of lost, you know. So, um, like, there was that. And then I, I feel like co I say COVID changed everything because um, my, my son was born slightly after that. So um, I just haven't had the opportunity to, to make golf. Yeah, I, I haven't gone in a long time either. I want to say it's been, like, I don't know, maybe five years or so. But I used to do that, too, when we would go down to – I have family in Delaware, and we would go to Bethany Beach and Rehoboth Beach. Or I was—I feel like I've brought this up to you before. Where I was the, the champion of whack-a-mole. Yeah, yeah. Beach. I used to win, like, all these stuff. And, and my brother – remember Dance Dance Revolution? My brother was, like, really amazing at that game. And, like, people would line up, like, around the – not, like, around the block, but line up to play him, and he would beat every single person. I always thought that was – so we had, like, you know, we were running the, the underground gaming, you know, ring here at Rehoboth <laughs> Beach. But, but I I um I don't really – but I, we would go mini golfing there too. But I don't really – like, I know you, you're, like, a pool person, but do you go to the – do you go to the beach still? Yeah, like, I, I mean, mean like, I love the up beach. until that point that you mentioned? Yeah, I love the beach. I um I just, like, I could sit there all day. Um, what I do is like, I'll sit there for like two hours and then I'll go into the water for like an hour and then I'll come back and sit there for like an hour. Then I'll go into the water for like an hour. That's like my plan. Um, and, uh, like when I, when I get there, my wife like wants to go into the water right away. I'm like, no, no, you have, you have to get hot first. You have to like want to go into the water. And she's like, come on, come on. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm just like, I sit there for two hours, just like, just like developing the sweat. And then like, once I'm ready, then I, I go into the water and I just don't want to get out. <laughs> and then she, she's oh. like, yeah. And, and then like, she'll want to go in with me and then she'll be in for like two minutes. She's like, all right, time to get out. I'm like, no, I'm not coming out. <laughs> so <laughs> you're. You're one of the, you got to get warmed up. The people say, let me get warmed up out here in the chair. Yeah. I think it's time. because, I think it's because of my professional or no professional, uh, competitive swimming days. Um, when I swam competitively, like I, I've been in a lot of cold pools. Like there was one time, um, I swam, uh, it was the time trials at a uh, summer, summer league when I was in high school. Um, and the water was so cold that I don't remember swimming like, uh, like that event. And I, I just remember like going home and I was like still shaking like an hour oh after God. I'd been in the pool. Like it was that freezing. Um, and like I'd been in a lot of uh, other cold pools at Penn State. Uh, we practiced outside until October 15th. And, you know, at Penn State, sometimes it starts snowing before then. Oh and God, one time, yeah. one yeah, one time we were we were swimming and it was snowing. Um, and but like the water was warm, but like no one wanted to get out. <laughs> like everyone was just like in the pool. <laughs> and it you, was like it's practiced. You practiced outside until October fifteenth. Yeah, because they rented that's, the that's they insane. rented the natatorium pool until then. So, um, yeah, that's in, that's insane. Yep, <laughs> that's a cold that's a cold time of year to be swimming outside. I don't know how you how you did that. I know. So you know yeah, now you can right. see why I have to be warm to to jump into the pool. <laughs> <laughs> I just have like just I have like so many bad memories of just being in freezing water. So I can't, I just can't handle it anymore. I used to love to get in, in the water too. And I would go out, you know, like not dangerously far, but far enough and ride in the waves. I wasn't, and, and I got stung by a jellyfish as a youth. Mm. 
and I got pinched by a crab. And but, but I don't know why. Like over the last few years, I've, I haven't been in the ocean in, in like four years. Okay. But like, I, I'm scared to get in now. At least not where not if I can't see. I don't. Uh, I don't know. Like I, I know it's a really low percentage. Like it's, it's very unlikely that I'll get bit by a shark. But. I don't yeah. know. I don't think I get enough enjoyment to, to justify risking it, even though that is that is a low percentage chance. So I guess like my bottom line, the bottom line is I'm scared, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it depends. depends where you are. Um, like, I, I think I told you earlier or like uh, like a week ago or two weeks ago uh, when I visited Charlie in Tampa, we'd go to um, one of like the St. Petersburg beaches or something like that, where like it was the Gulf of Mexico. And it was like the water was clear and it was there were no waves, but the water was like 84. Like it was. It felt like uh, a nice pool to go into, um, and so it was not cold at all. And then when I was on my honeymoon, we went to Bermuda, and the water there was like crystal, like crystal clear. Even though it was the Atlantic Ocean, it was still like crystal clear. Like you could see everything. Um, they even had these like floaties like attached to rocks in the in in the middle of the of the ocean. Um, and so like I was just like I was laying there for I, what I thought was like a half hour, but apparently it was an hour. It was my it was our first full day there, and. Uh, <laughs> uh like my wife came out she's like uh you're getting pretty burned here i'm like no nah, no nah, i'm okay and then she and she came out like 10 15 minutes later she's like well well you're really burned i'm like really and uh she's like yeah and so i i came out i'm like i just looked at myself like oh my god i'm like bright red uh, and it was it was so horrible um that whole week was just so painful uh, i like i was in agony the oh, entire geez. week like yeah and it was the first full day i was there um so oh it was, it was, those, those floaties in the middle of the ocean were, were a trap Wow. Wow. I, I, I Have you ever seen a movie called, uh, like, this is what scares me. I get scared of, of, of this. You've seen a movie called Open Water. It's, it's maybe like 18, 15 year old movie, 20 year old movie. No. It's about these people that I, I, I want to say it's based on a true story, but that, what does that mean anymore? But these long story short, the, this like couple goes on like this diving expedition and then they get left there in the water. Like they don't take accountability and they get, and they get they're, they're just stranded out there to get eaten by shark. It's it's really terrifying, and, and I don't use that word often. Terrifying. I think that that's to, like to be stuck out in the middle of the ocean. I, I I'm scared. Of, I'm scared to go in the ocean. I guess is, is what happened. But I think that's weird because I loved it as a kid. I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm, well, maybe it's because I swam competitively that like I'm never I like I'm never concerned or anything like that. So um, yeah, it could be it too could much whack a ball. That's what did me in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, love to eat says, uh, asking betting on golf. Respect to you guys. Uh, yeah, we hit uh, Akshay Bhatia uh, last week at 68 to one, so that was, uh, yeah, that was a great the... bet. Um, we yeah. hit some long shots last year as well. I think we hit like Sepulon Straka at 55 to one. Um, we had Hovlin at one point, I think it was like 40 to one. I don't want to say uh, like what, 25 what, or 30 or something. I think, what'd you say? What'd you say? Brooks Kapka was. Yes. Uh, yeah. Bruce, it, was Bruce, the Masters. it was like a month it was, after the Masters. It's the PGA involved. Championship. That's that's the second oh, major. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, he was, uh, I think he was like 25 to one or something like that. Um, our longest shot win last year was uh, Lucas Automatic Glover um, at uh, what was he? Um, he was uh, nine. Did we get him 95 to one? Uh, I think. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I bet him to win the St. Jude Championship. He was 95 to one. I only bet 0.3 units to 127. Like I was so mad at myself. Like why couldn't I bet like a whole unit to win 9,500 dollars? You know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, hindsight cool. hindsight is uh, 2020 as uh, as uh, no, 50 50. Right. Yeah, it's 50. Yeah, 50 50 yeah. and 2020. Depending the, on yeah. uh, who you're talking. <laughs> Did I ever tell you I put that for those of you who don't recall? That was a Cam Newton quote. Hindsight is 50 or uh, yeah, hindsight is 50 50. I put that in a call on a college presentation and, and maybe like half the class laughed. I was, I was actually kind of impressed that people knew we had a picture of, it was something like the hindsight of the project. And I put it up on the PowerPoint. And I had a, a picture of Cam Newton. I was like, Oh, hindsight is 50 50. I couldn't believe it. half the class laughed, but I mean, it wouldn't have happened. Way, yeah. That's Cam awesome. Newton, he, he was almost, he was almost as bad as uh, like who I, I feel like, he was such like like an interesting like character in the NFL. He he really had some gaffes up there at the mic. He did. Um, he had some weird clothing styles too. Um, oh he was, yeah, he was he was really interesting. Um, 
But uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was always uh, fun to listen to him. Uh, didn't he? He called out one woman and said like, "Oh, you should be in the kitchen" or something like that, or, or some something. He, he said he, something of that nature. Um, can I yeah, remember exactly he, what it was? He said Cam Newton in the press conference. She asked a question about like the routes or something, and he said, "Oh wow, you don't usually hear a woman ask questions about routes." I, th- I think it was something to that something effect. Like that. Yeah, as, got, Jor- as got- Jordan Rodrigue, uh, she used to uh, work cover the Panthers, and I think she covers the Rams now. Uh, for ESPN, okay. like I, I know, I know who he was talking about. I can't remember the exact quote, but I think you're right. It was something like that. He's like, "It's like, oh, that's pretty impressive for a woman to say." <laughs> it's like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. And you know, <laughs> geez, sometimes you like wonder. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I guess, I, mean, I guess the answer is no. Like, do you think before you say something? But what do you? Why do you think? Like, remember that year that he had in 2015, talking to Cam Newton when the Panthers went 15 and one, I actually thought that they might go undefeated, but they lost that, uh, the, the week 16 game against the Falcons who were terrible. Mm-hmm. And that was the only game they lost. They were steamrolling everybody. That was the year Cam Newton was MVP. Yep. Why do you think he, he faded? Even if it's an obvious answer, like I'm, I'm kind of interested to hear your take. Why do you think he faded away? Like so quickly, you know, like why couldn't he really, you know, I know he had a couple good years after that, I guess, but if memory serves, but, you yeah, know, like he, had, he, was on Patriots, he wasn't any good. He went back. Like, do you think they just yeah. figured out the scrambling quarterback thing? I feel like they always do, but I'm, I'm interested in your take. No, he had he had a lot of injuries, and he just was never the same after them. I think it just like right. compounding injuries just just made him worse and worse. Um, plus, like he had a great team around him that year, and um, the, the blocking got worse, and so he got a little exposed. Was exposed, but I think it was the injuries more than anything. Right, right. Yeah, it's it's just I remember when he went to New England, I was like, well, maybe they could be, you know, all right, but that, that really didn't work there either. No, so. no, he was I mean, he remember um he came back to Carolina and he scored a touchdown and he's like, I'm back, I'm back. Oh, yeah, and, then, and we took we faded him the next week. We knew because we knew everyone was gonna yeah. like him. We faded him <laughs> like every week after that that he played, and he never covered the spread, not a single time. <laughs> what do you which Super Bowl do you think was more like, were you surprised that the Broncos won like so hand like so handily? I thought that they were gonna they were gonna win that Super Bowl. What was what, the final score was twenty four ten, but the Panthers like they kind of re- reminded me of the Broncos the first time when they lost to Seattle. They were just steamrolling everyone going into it, and then they mm-hmm. looked. I don't want to say inept, but close enough, you know, that they really didn't. Neither of those teams I just mentioned had a chance in their respective Super Bowls. Yeah, and I felt like they didn't have that tough of a schedule in the playoffs. And I thought that like Denver's defense is going to be like the best defense they'd have seen all year. Uh, and so I like Denver. I bet Denver that Super Bowl. Um, I, I didn't think it was going to be that lopsided, but um, I mm-hmm. did think that Denver was going to win though. Um, so I remember, I, I remember that kind of being like an easy call. I think I had like multiple units on that, on that game. I contend to, to this day, because do you remember in the first round, the, Vi- the Seahawks beat the Vikings 10 to 9, and Blair Walsh missed that. It, what was it? It was like a 28 or like a 30 yard field goal or something. Yeah, super, super cold game. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, and he, Blair Walsh, he really had, he had some good, some good years. Like he was a mm-hmm. pretty, he was a pretty decent kicker kind of up, up until then. But I remember thinking if they had just made that easy field goal, Green Bay would have ended up playing Carolina. And they played a decently close game against Carolina in the regular season, and the, the Packers started six and zero, and then they finished four and six. So they like kind of almost like backed their way into the playoffs. But I was like, I can't believe like I, I would have rather Green Bay play Carolina, and because of that missed field goal, they ended up playing Arizona, and that's where Aaron Rodgers threw that hail mary to Janice. Yeah, that that was that was that game. I still contend. I, I think the Pack. It doesn't matter because it never happened. I think the Packers could. Well, they could have won that game against Arizona too. That 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 playoff game really hurt too because it was such it, it was such a high to such a low. I mean that, you know that that last second as a Packers fan that last second hail mary, and then Fitzgerald on the first play after it looks like we're about to sack Warner, you know, mm-hmm. and then it's that hurt that and then Fitzgerald almost took it the whole way and then he cashed it the next play. It was yeah. it was a real quick like up up and down. So yeah, uh, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that field goal made the difference. The Packers would have played uh, would have played uh, Carolina instead that year. So, hey, it's all, it's yeah. all about matchups. I mean, some teams match up better against others, and so yeah, I think uh, I, the Green Bay could have maybe they wouldn't have won, but they would have given uh, Carolina a pre- pretty decent game. Um, yeah, I, 
I, I, I definitely think so too. Geez, that was, that was, yeah, that was 2015, 2016. Yeah, almost, almost 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty crazy. That seems like yesterday. Well, we were talking. We were talking about the undefeated Patriots season where they lost to the Giants. Was what 16, 16 seasons ago? Yeah. Uh, well, about to be seventeen. Oh. Yeah, it was. Oh, that was oh seven oh eight. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. I remember. I remember more about that season than any than any other season. Um, that, that was Brett Favre's last year in Green Bay. Yeah. It. Yeah. It was. I. I think. The season I remember the most is 0-2. Um, just because I guess I thought it was a really interesting season because uh, like the Eagles looked like the best team, and then McNabb got hurt, and the Buccaneers ended up winning the Super Bowl because they played the Raiders, and the Raiders uh, they the or, like um, John Gruden knew all the Raiders plays, um, and the Raiders center went missing, and uh, the Titans imploded in that AFC Championship uh, because they looked like they're going to win. They fumbled like three times on kickoffs mm-hmm. and. Uh, like Rich Gannon won the MVP that year and he like he was awesome, but like the Raiders lost yeah. four in a row during the regular season and it looked like they were gonna fall out and they, they caught fire again. Jerry Rice was 40 and he had a great season. I remember that. Um but yeah, that was that that was a great season. I remember that like pretty vividly. But uh yeah. That Wasn't was, Rod uh, Woodson on that team too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Rod Woodson. Uh it was Jerry Rice, Tim Brown, uh as the two top receivers. Brown, yeah. yeah. Th- didn't they they abandon the game plan? Uh, maybe two days before or the night before or something like that, didn't they? Isn't that the claim, the Raiders? I'll, I'll, I've, I've, I've done a little research on it, but do you know about that? Abandoned the that, game plan? Yeah, they abandoned the game like two nights before the, the Super Bowl. They're, I can't – I'll remember his name when I hear it, but the Raiders coach said we're going to completely change the game plan two nights before. Well, I mean, John Gruden knew all the plays. And so uh, I remember, I think it was Keyshawn Johnson who said, or maybe it was someone else, but he was like on the sideline, he was he was uh, heard saying, this is just like practice. Because like they, they were able to uh, practice everything that the Raiders are going to do. Uh, just because stupid Bill Callahan, who coached the Raiders, didn't, didn't change up anything. Um, so that was, that was such a lopsided Super Bowl. But I remember thinking like the Buccaneers weren't even the best team that year. They actually like they got swept by the Saints that season. And I thought if the Sa- the Saints were so close to making the playoffs, I thought if the Saints got in, they could have given Tampa a lot of problems because that Tampa yeah. team couldn't stop power running games. And the Saints had Deuce McAllister, and like he just gave them so so many issues. Deuce um, McAllister, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I like I, I felt like Tampa got so lucky with the matchups. Because like the Raiders were a passing team uh, in the NFC Championship, the Eagles were a passing team, and then the divisional round they played the 49ers, uh, who really shouldn't have been there because the they played 49ers played the Giants in the first round. The Giants had a 17 point lead and they blew it. And, like the Niners weren't that good. Um, in fact, like remember uh, Steve Mariucci was the head coach of the Niners. He got fired after that game because uh, they they kind of they gave up like too early. I remember. Uh, <laughs> Like they were, um, they had, they really had the ball near midfield, and it was like a minute left uh, before halftime, and then like they took knees. Uh, and I'm, I was, I remember thinking like, you're not even going to try to tr- get a field goal, and uh, and they they should they pan to like the owner's box. Uh, the owner was like, like he just like wait, like raised his arms yeah, in frustration yeah. and like walked out. <laughs> like I was like, man, and Mariucci's not going to last after this game, is wow. he? Wow, <laughs> yeah. I don't remember that. I don't remember that part of it. Yeah. yeah. So. Jeez, I. I just I remember I watched that that uh, that America's Game series where they have a couple players in the coach and they talk through their entire. It's like an hour special for every team that won the Super Bowl, and they do some another segment called uh, the Missing Rings. But I remember because the Eagles beat Tampa Bay in the regular season, but Gruden was on there, and I'll never forget the way he says it on there. He goes, he was on the bus, and I think he said it to Warren Sapp, or, and, and he said, if we if we play them again, the Eagles, if we play them again, I know how to beat them. I know how to beat them because re- remember they came in and what what were the Bucks like oh and thirty two or something when the game temperature was under freezing everyone like no one would like everyone was talking about that yeah. oh because the game and it was going to be well below freezing I, I if I remember correctly uh in, at that game so everyone was just kind of hanging their hat on that and you, uh, you know you know what's funny about that that first meeting between Eagles the Eagles and the Buccaneers. Was that uh, the Eagles are like minus four in that game, and they they ended up winning twenty to ten, uh, but the, it was like three three for a long time. Like there's nothing going on offensively, and the Eagles suddenly got a long touchdown, 
Uh, and they were able to do that because Warren Sapp got poked in the eye and Sapp had to leave the game. And so like with no Sapp out, they had no no pass rush. And then McNabb hit Pinkston for a, uh, a, a deep touchdown pass. And then in the second half, Brad Johnson got hurt and they had to put in Rob Johnson. Um, and so like the, the Buccaneers, like they kind of got screwed uh, on like two injuries in that game. But I still thought that I still thought the Eagles were, were would have won the rematch had McNabb been healthy because McNabb uh, got injured uh, against Arizona in week 12 that year. And uh, and he just he came back for the playoffs after A.J. Feely went like six and one as a starter. Um, but he just wasn't the same. And I thought that they should keep going with Feely. Like, obviously, McNabb is a much better quarterback than Feely, but, like, he was he was playing hurt. And I thought that having, like, a, a healthy quarterback would have meant more than an injured one. Yeah, boy, the Eagles the Eagles had – they're one and four in their, their NFC championships uh, games, yeah. and that was one of those losses. They really they really took their lumps, man. Yeah, and, and, and I, 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 I think your, your, your point is, is well taken here. You know how many? I I remember it was that that game. I I feel like as an Eagles fan, that game against Tampa Bay, and then the one against the Cardinals, which is one of my favorite stories that we had. And I'll bring it up now because I'll I'll never forget. This is this is when I kind of realized, like I, I would say I was on like the contrarian train, like full time. (laughs) This this game because so many of these plays have worked out for us. Often they're your your pick of the month in, in the NFL, and it was it was that. Uh, the the 0809 season, Cardinals hosting the uh, the Eagles in the NFC Championship game, and remember, like the Eagles barely snuck in the playoffs. Remember, they they crushed Dallas on the last game of the regular season, and then they they beat. Uh, took, I think it's Tavares Jackson was the quarterback of the Vikings. They beat the Vikings, and then they upset the Giants. You know how the Giants and Eli Manning they were the one seed, and you know how they go stale like real quick. Yep, yep. It was a weird score. It was like 26 to 11 or something. It was, it was a really strange score. I want, it might have been Scorigami, but anyhow. And then everyone out, because I was living in Westchester outside Philly at the time, and everyone, because the Cardinals were like, you know, the they're perennial basement dwellers for so long, you know, for so long, for so long. And I remember everyone was calling into uh, like 610 WIP. They're like, we got our tickets to Tampa. We're going to the Super Bowl. And I was like, oh, no. Oh no. And, and I remember cause he, we, I was texting you right away. I was like, I really love the Cardinal. They were plus four at yeah. home. Cause they weren't really supposed to be there either. They beat the Falcons and then they beat Jake Delhomme and, and the Panthers. Well, it was, it was that year they, they started hot, but then remember down the stretch, like they, they like collapsed and then they played at new England and they got destroyed. They looked like the, one of the worst teams in the NFL that game. Yeah. I, I, I knew they were going to win that game, but remember, then they almost blew it. It was 25-24, but then they came down and got the the, the touchdown at the end and the two point thirty two twenty five. The Cardinals won that game. Mm-hmm. I will never forget. I was I worked at Domino's Pizza at the time. I was you know during when I was in college. I just remember texting you that morning. I was so confident uh, in, on that bet, the Cardinals plus four. I remember texting you though because I was like I felt like a sucker because it seemed so easy to me. And you, I, I told you that I texted you that, and you wrote me back. It's like well. Man, like all the money is going the other way, so like don't don't feel that way. Like you're you're, you know, you have a sharp eye here, and like yeah. I know you love it too. And that was, wow, that that was crazy. I remember the disappointment in 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 Philadelphia too after that. That, that seemed like such a sure thing to so many fans, and I know that one that one hurt them too. Yeah, I mean, um, the other side of that story is like you you texted me. I remember that that Sunday morning. Um, and I, I remember the day before I had I had dinner with some friends and we were talking about the game naturally. And like it was like it was like five of us, and like the other four. They're like, oh, Eagles going to win. You know, Eagles. So such an easy bet. They're like, are you you're taking the Eagles, right? Well, I'm like, no, I'm taking Arizona. <laughs> and so like they're like, <laughs> like try, trying to talk me into t- taking the Eagles. I'm like, no, I like Arizona here. Um, and so like I, I just had like the entire meal just like barrage of like this Eagles hype. And then uh, the next the next morning, I get this text from you. I'm like, yeah, I think we're on the right side here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't think I knew that part. Yeah, yeah. So. like you were. That's usually that's when you know, you know, when someone like you, like you run into a random stranger. I know I've had these stories with you, and they're like, "Ah, this team sucks." It's like, oh wow, like you think that, and like I bet a lot of other people think that too. So let's let's take them this week, and it almost always works. You know, not. I'm pull, when I say always, I'm just pulling that out of thin air. But yeah. Yeah. anyhow, uh, yeah, let's get to some comments. Slew here. Uh, so this is funny. Uh, you were able to hit the ball with your dreadful hand-eye coordination. 
<laughs> my hand eye coordination is horrible. Uh, it's funny, funny you say that because I remember how I said my friend took me to the driving range and like tried to teach me. So mm. what I what I didn't say was that <laughs> like the the first uh, the first swing I took, uh, I was like I was like his friend is uh, my friend's name is Chris. I was like so Chris like what if I break one of your clubs? He's like I'm, he's like you're not gonna break one of my clubs. Um, and uh, I'm like are you sure? He's like yeah. And then I took a swing and it broke his club. <laughs> <laughs> He's well, on the first swing. First swing, yep. I, I just I missed the ball completely. <laughs> Hit the ground. <laughs> and so, well, credit credit to him. Like he he like stuck with me and like kept, kept like teaching me. But like I I had I was like, dude, I'll pay for your club. And he and, like, he actually was like, no, no, don't worry about it. Like uh, I think, wow, uh, yeah, I, I kept like insisting, but he was like, no, no, don't worry about it. I, I think um. I don't know if they were his. I, I don't like. I don't know what the deal was, but um, I mean, he golfed in college, so uh, you know, uh, maybe it was like the schools or something like that, and he had to pay. He didn't have to pay for it or something. I, I don't. I don't know what the story was, but he could, like kept insisting. He's like, no, don't worry about it. It's, it's like, it's like it's it's paid for. So, uh, like, luckily, I didn't have to reimburse him for that. But I, I did. I, I did like keep saying, like, dude, I feel bad. <laughs> it's like. I, I didn't, <laughs> But, but then again, in fairness, I did say I was going to break it. And he's like, no, don't worry about it. <laughs> you know what? The media is going to eat that story up, Walt, when you win the Masters next year. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> to qualify first. You never, like, I, I've been to Top Golf a couple times. I actually did all right there. I mean, for Top that doesn't mean anything. And anyhow, you're, you're, I contend there's no way that your hand eye coordination is worse than that guy that struck out looking. In slow pitch softball, that's that's a violation, man. I, I no, I can't, I can't hit the ball um, at all. Uh, so I, <laughs> at least he, at least he didn't swing. Like I, I would have just missed it completely. Uh, yeah, but like but, it would have been like pure luck if I hit it. Yeah, but at least you'd be up there hacking. Like who goes to a slow pitch softball game tr not trying to hit the ball? I think that's silly. Yeah, I don't know, maybe <laughs> someone like me with bad uh, hand eye coordination, perhaps. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what, I don't know if you knew this. I was a pretty good hitter. I used to bat cleanup for our JV team. Okay. I was, uh, I was, I had my, I had my heyday in baseball, so I could, I could, you know, you, you give me the golf lessons. I'll give you the baseball lessons. Let's stick, let's stick with that. Yeah. You know what? Um, we used to play baseball uh, in recess when I was in grade school and I was like one of the worst, um, like other sports I was good at, like, like hockey and whatnot. Basketball is like pretty decent, but like baseball, I was horrible because of my hand-eye coordination and I just couldn't hit anything. And like, it was so weird. One day, I remember this like vividly, it was like fifth grade. I hit two home runs in one day. And like, people were shocked. Like I was, I was so surprised the first time, whatever the, the, uh, like just over at the third base, uh, out of the yard, uh, out of the schoolyard. And then it happened the next, it happened like the next recess too. And I was like, I felt like on top of the world. I was like, Oh my God, this is amazing. Now I'm a great hitter. I'd never hit a home run again after that ever. Really? Um, yeah. I don't know what, ha I don't know what was into me that day. Like what happened to me? Um, I, uh, like it was, I was borrowing this dude's, uh, orange, orange baseball bat. And like, I just kept borrowing it like for the rest of the, uh, my, my, my grade school years. Uh, and it never worked. Like I never hit a home run ever again. Like not, not there, not ever, not anywhere else. Um, it was so weird. Like I hit two home runs in my professional life and they both happened the same day as, as a fifth grade. <laughs> you were like, do you know the story of former Phillies player, Steve Jeltz? No. So I, I want to say he hit like five career home runs, but there is, it's, it's a really interesting story. So Jeltz is one of the worst hit, hitters in, in the league. Like literally, like if you break it down objectively, he's one of the worst, but he's a great fielder. That's why he's, you know, he's known, known for his glove, but there was this game. It was in the eighties, the pirates, it was the pirates and the Phillies. The pirates scored 10 runs in the first inning. They were up 10, nothing and lost the game. And Steve Jeltz, who had like five career home runs, hit two home runs in that game, <laughs> one from each side of the pl plate. And he's statistically like the worst hitter. And they come back from a 10 nothing deficit nice. and win the game. But what really makes it interesting is after the Pirates go up 10 nothing in the bottom of the first, the Phillies leadoff man goes on. And I can't think of his name, but the Pirates commentator goes, if we lose this game, I'll walk back to Pittsburgh. <laughs> So once the off so, and they lost the game, so he did this like walk for charity from Philadelphia wow. to Pittsburgh, like once the, once the season ended, and that that's was awesome. that must be that must be horrible. That's a lot of walking, man. Yeah, I can barely make it around the neighborhood, like like Philly. <laughs> <laughs> I've been I've been walk I've been walking four miles a day this past week. I did like six out of the last seven days. Wow. It's staying 
it's staying light out out longer. Where, where do you stand on the on the setting the clocks back and moving them forward? I, I used to like it when it stays light longer back when I was younger. I don't like it anymore. I I, I think it's maybe five o'clock, and I look at the clock. It's seven forty five. It's still light. Like you lose track. Other and and but it's vice versa. Like when we put the clocks back, I'll be like, oh, it's got to be nine o'clock, and it's only six. So I don't know. I, I just I, I guess I prefer the nighttime uh, more now. Um, I, I'd rather it stay as light as as, oh, as really? much as possible because like uh, I never get to go outside really, and <laughs> I like I like the light, you know, because um, I I do all my work at night, um, and I and I prefer it to be still dark when I go to bed too. So like that that's one aspect of it as well, um, but like everything changed for me. Like I, I always hated setting the class back. I always did. Um, I, I think that we should just go with what we have now that the daylight savings time and just, just keep it on and like not move the clocks back. In fact, like Congress, like they were talking about passing it. And then of course they didn't because Congress can't pass anything. Um, I don't even, I don't even know why. Like they, like I felt like it was, it was like unanimous. They, they unanimously voted it. I think the, you know, I think the Senate did. And then the house was like, no, no, no. Of course they didn't because they're they're all idiots but um i i don't like i don't know why they didn't um but I, i'll tell you this like when you have kids like you like i hate i always hated uh switching the clocks now i i it's like that's like times 10 like i hate it so much because like oh, the, kids, wow. the kids don't know and so like they lose an hour they lose an hour completely it's not like you could tell them to go to bed earlier an hour um mm -hmm. or or vice versa but like yeah they lose an hour and they don't get it and so like they're all their naps are screwed up and it just it's just awful like like that that whole following week is just just a mess with them so, oh well so you you feel even stronger about this than i do yeah 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 <laughs> i don't really i mean no, that, that, that makes sense because it's you know hey speaking of that sort of thing did you did you see the eclipse did you did you look oh, outside so it was like it's like cloudy outside that's what it was like yeah, nothing. I didn't. I didn't see anything either. Did you? <laughs> Charles Barkley was. It was the. Yeah, it was Monday at the night of the national championship game, and he was like, "Eclipse." He's like, "What? You've never seen it dark outside before? Stop it!" <laughs> <laughs> I had yeah. some. I had some friends send me a couple pictures. Like, of it. I didn't. I didn't see anything. I also wasn't looking that hard. No, I didn't. I didn't. It was but, cloudy here, so you couldn't really see anything anyway. Yeah. Um, and it felt like. It felt like it was. Um, uh, like twilight outside sort of and then and then it wasn't it was, it was so weird like i expected more um but like i said you couldn't even like even if you wanted to look you couldn't look and uh, when i was i was actually picking my son up from daycare i was driving home and i saw like two girls uh sitting on a rock and they were they both had these special glasses on they're both looking up i'm like what are you looking at this it's cloudy outside you're not gonna see anything like it's, it's idiots it's just like wasting their time maybe they're hoping that you know the eclipse would clear the clouds or something. You know how people. Oh, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. but I, I did see some pictures that were kind of cool. But I don't know. I just yeah. It also, can't you you could like done damage to your eye if you looked at it or something. How many how many people do you think that happened to? Uh probably a decent amount. Um, I, I think like you can look at it and be fine. You can't just you can't stare at that, that though. It's like the sun. Like you can look at the sun for a second and be okay. Like, if, but if you stare at the sun for a long time, like your 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 retina is gonna get burned. It's the same thing as the eclipse. But you just don't notice it, and that, that's like the danger of it because like it's not gonna be as bright, but it's still gonna cause major damage to retinas. But like, you can look at it for one second and be fine. Um, so oh, like yeah. that, yeah. And I don't know if you saw um I don't know if you saw this story, but like on the view, the one of the ladies like it's like oh look at that the eclipse is being caused by climate change. <laughs> It's like, it's like, no, like no, back in the seventies, they said it was going to happen like this year. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I just, I just, I just hid inside, and I, I really didn't hear anyone like from around my area say that they saw much anyway. So I, I don't know, whatever. Well, I, I don't. No, in Florida, it was it was not in the path. It was uh, like I think we had it more here, but there there's like a direct path that it took. Uh, yeah. It started in like Texas, and then it moved like northeast. Um, I think we're we're like in the, we're on like the periphery of it here in Philly, uh, or like the outskirts of Philly. Um, so like I, I expected a little bit more. Uh, like I didn't expect like a full eclipse, but it was. I thought it would be a little bit darker, but it wasn't. So, but then again, like I said, it was cloudy, so I don't think people would have noticed it anyway. What were you doing? Doing? Remember in 2012, like December 2012, when they said what was it, the Mayan calendar was gonna, and they said the world was gonna end. What were you mm -hmm. doing at that? Because it was like one 
32 p.m. There, like, there was like a specific time. I remember I intentionally took a nap just in case. I was like, I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> if it's if something does happen, I don't like. I woke up and it was after that time, and I was like, all right, I, you know, I wasn't worried anyway, but I guess we're fine. Some people so, yeah. really. It was really no, wasn't it? That. Wasn't it like May 2012 or May 2011 or something? Like that? It was in the summer or it was like in the spring. Sorry, it was it was May something. Um, I think it was, maybe that's something else that I'm thinking of. Um, the Rapture. That's what I'm thinking of. Where like yeah, the Rapture was, was happening, like in May 2011 and 2012. No, it was definitely or was it 2011? It was definitely December because it was right around Christmas time. If I'm not if I'm not mistaken. But was it wasn't the Mayan calendar? It, it was. Um, it was. I want to say it was like the Mayan calendar said like that was like the last date. You, you know, and people said, "Oh, the world's going to end" because because their calendars were so accurate or, or or something like that. And some people, I would say, I was about as worried as about it as I was worried about Y two K. No. So not very much at all. No, I, I've, I've, I've pulled up here. Uh, uh, Hal, Harold Camping, that was his name. He said Judgment Day would take place May 21st, 2011, and the Underworld would take place five months later. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of, yeah. Um, and I, I remember this because uh, the um, the girl I talk about in the first chapter of my book, um, that that like hot blonde lawyer girl, um, she got actually got married on, on this day. Um, and oh, I, really? she, invited, she invited me to the wedding, and I, yeah, I didn't go. Um, cause like, it was in North Carolina. I didn't like, and like, I didn't have a date like that back then anyway. So like, I'm like, gonna like go by myself to North Carolina, you know? Um, so <laughs> Wait, did she intentionally so, pick judgment day or did she just happen to be, I, I don't know if she did it intentionally. Maybe they got a discount cause it was supposed to be judgment day. I, I don't yeah. know. Um, you're in, you're in, save the date to our judgment day. What? I know. Uh, so I actually like joked about it uh, with her and I'm like, well, I hope uh, everything goes, goes well on your uh, wedding slash rapture. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so, no, uh, I she, mean, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 she, she just laughed, but, um, oh, okay. no, no, I, I remember, I remember that day vividly. I actually went to a party that night at my, uh, my friend Adrian's house and, um, uh, my, my friend Ryan, who's, uh, actually the editor of the website, uh, we were talking about that and like how stupid it was. And um, we actually we were playing Donkey Kong Country Returns on uh, on the, the uh, what was it the Wii. Um, and uh, like the time just passed by. We didn't notice. And I'm like, OK, I guess we're not being raptured here. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, slew. Yeah. 1221. Yeah. Search like that date and like Mayan calendar or something. Sorry, I'm not trying to put you to work here, but. That's that's the one. Yeah, I remember it was right before Christmas. Or it was right around Christmas. Yeah, that's and, probably uh, something. So I'm thinking of something else. But I was thinking about the rapture. Um, yeah, yeah, the, the twenty. Yeah, the whole twenty twelve. I remember that. Um, but I, I don't know. I took a nap. I was like, if, if it really happens, I don't want to. I don't want to be around for it. If I went, you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think like because the rapture didn't happen, I thought like this was more of a joke too. Um, and I remember like getting, getting into uh, a, a big argument with this, some guy at the gym. Um, this is like ahead of the rapture. And I was like, I kind of like said a joke about it. He's like, no, this is real. And, um, <laughs> I was like, dude, not, like, nothing's going to happen. He's like, no, trust me, it will happen. Um, and so I, I never, saw, I never saw him again. So maybe he got raptured and like, <laughs> I just, it's still stuck in my memory. I don't know. <laughs> he never saw him again. Yeah. So I, I wish I could tell him but like, dude, I was right. <laughs> but this is like uh, 13 years ago at this point. So um, imagine the day that they are right. <laughs> well, I mean, so you're going to right. be right eventually about something. Yeah. Um, something bad. Like an Independence happen. Day. Remember yeah. all those people were predicting. <laughs> that, you know what? Yeah. That I, I, I never saw the. I know they remade it a couple or or they, I don't know if it was an Independence Day sequel remake or reboot or whatever the difference is. I didn't want to see it anyway because Independence Day, I mean, it's not. Like, would you give that classic status? It's it's a pretty beloved movie, mm -hmm. even if it's not like, like from a cinematic standpoint, it's not like a masterpiece. But it was a big blockbuster at the time. Did you did you like that movie? Like when it came out, it was huge. Remember? Yeah, I saw it in the movie theater. It was uh, I thought it was really good. Um, of course, like Will Smith was in it, and like that's when he was like one of the top <laughs> actors because he was in Fresh yeah. Prince of Bel Air. Like, you know, everything he touched turned to gold. Um, jiggy with it, yeah, like every, right, every right. Men, Men in Black, Everyone yeah, yeah. Uh, so 
Um, I, I liked it a lot. My parents actually watch Independence Day every single year on July 4th. <laughs> so they, they oh, definitely really? like it too. Yeah. So um, it was, I mean, it was a fun, it's a fun movie. You know, like there are yeah. some stupid things, like very convenient things where, you know, like he, he finds the vice president, like his, or the wife, uh, the president's wife uh, in like the wreckage, like just randomly and stuff like that. Like it, it there's a lot, a lot of like convenience yeah. to that movie. Um, and you can find a oh. lot of flaws of it too, but I don't know. It's, it's a fun movie. It's not like, I don't think it's supposed to be taken super seriously though. A fun movie. Well, people died at the hands of extraterrestrials. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> well, it's like yeah. Mars attacks. Maybe Mars attacks is, uh, it's like, Oh better. yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Mars. Oh, the, whatever the sound they made. Uh, mm-hmm. so that was probably a terrible impression. I haven't seen it in so long. Yeah. I, but, I saw it recently because, um, I was watching TV with my wife. My wife, I fell asleep, and um, it was like the next movie on. I was like, and it was like Mars Attacks. Oh, I, I was like, I saw this in the movie theater too, but I haven't seen it since. Um, it was like, it was pretty good. Yeah. Um, let's get some comments. Uh, Love to says I was really good at mini golf. Uh, nice. Was, yeah. but why was like not anymore? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. <laughs> passed your prime. Yeah, um, yeah. What do you say? Jerks of the jerks of the beach here. <laughs> besides, besides uh, Chris. Uh, beached whale christy here who uh remember he <laughs> remember he rented the beach out to himself he closed the beach and then like he uh he sat on the beach by himself oh that's <laughs> he, right he I does, he does that like really uh, um <laughs> what a scumbag uh he says atlantic ocean is cold and salty uh yeah oh well, it depends where you are um in like the mid-atlantic for sure um but i was i was down in miami um in February of this is the month before COVID started. I was down in Miami for the Super Bowl, and then my wife and I stayed the, that following week. And like we had two bad days, but like so, like it's crazy. Like it was like eighty two in Miami. I mean, you know this. You live in Florida, but like this is even farther yeah. south than you. Um, so like it was eighty a couple of days in February, and like we were in the ocean. I was like, this is so weird to be in the ocean in February. Yeah. Um, but it was it was like it was not that cold. It was fine. Um, and so it, like it really depends where you are in the Atlantic. And like I said, I went to Bermuda and like the, the water was clear, it was not salty at all. Um, it was it was awesome. So, you know. Hey, when when you went to Miami, were you driving around listening to Miami by Will Smith? <laughs> I wasn't driving around. <laughs> that was a hit song too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go into Miami. Yeah. I uh no, I we weren't driving around. We uh we rented this place, uh this Airbnb place and it was like a it was like a nice community. Like everything was in walking distance. Um, they had this great burger place that was like right near there. Uh, they had this like I think it was like a Chilean restaurant. Um, and it was really good. I think it was Chilean. I forget what I forget what country it was. Uh, maybe it was Paraguay. I, I don't know. I forget what it was, but it was it was really good. And um, they had a lot of Russian there, Russian stuff there, um, which like caught my attention because I'm, you know, my family's Russian, and like I was able to read all the Russian stuff. They're like, it's it was like we we pass by um, this like sh- like shopping center, and there'd be like um, like a, a, like a Hispanic store, and then there'd be like a Russian store, and then be a Hispanic store, and then a Russian store. Hmm. Um, and I was like, why are there so many Russian stores? Uh, and so like I asked my dad when I got back, I'm like, like I'm like that, why why are there so many Russian places in Miami? And he, my dad's like, oh, uh, a lot of the people who came to um, to America uh, once they came to New York uh, or like a lot of Russians who, who came in the 70s came to New York and they either went north to Boston, stayed in New York or went south to Philly. But then he was like, a lot of smarter uh, Russians went down to Miami because <laughs> it's, oh, wow. it's, it's, it's warmer down there. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like yeah. And so there's this, like this huge Russian population in Miami. I had no idea. I didn't but, know that. I didn't know that either. Yeah, but like on the rare occasions when I drove around, uh, it was actually Charlie. I was down there with Charlie too. He was he was oh. driving me around. Um, see, he drove from Tampa, so it was pretty easy for him. Um, and so uh, like we would be stopped at a red light, and all of a sudden the car in front of us would go would would just go through the red light. I'm like, that was weird. And he, Charlie's like, oh, that person is Cuban. I'm like, how do you know that? And he, Charlie's like um yeah a lot of like the 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 law in cuba says that if there's a red light you can go as long as there's no traffic the other way it's like a stoplight 
Um, really? Yeah. So it was funny. It was like we saw that a couple times. Uh, and Charles oh, like, yeah, wow. the, person, the person's Cuban. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll tell you what. Even when I have a green light, I still always. I mean, I still always like take a second look both ways nowadays. Yeah. I don't know. That's why you know, like that's why I don't. I can't believe. Well, I don't want to get into the bike riders in the middle of the road. I can't. I can't stand those people. I'm the worst. Yeah. The bike because it's like first off. Like what? What do you? I'll keep this short, geez, because I could go. Off. Mm-hmm. But it's like, we're like, oh, who's you're wearing your little span? Like, oh, wall, I can't see too good. Is that Lance Armstrong over there in the middle of the road, <laughs> dude? It, it's just like everyone's texting and driving nowadays. What do you have a death wish? Why are you doing? Like, if you're on the bike path or you're on the shoulder, whatever, that's fine. But like, when you ride in the middle of the road, it's I don't know. I it's I can't stand that crap. I, I stand by what I what I said. I don't know. That's I have strong convictions on the bike riders in the middle of the road. Yeah, I. I it's like they're so fragile, and like you could just bump them and like end their lives. Yeah, it just, it, it's I always their fault. It's so, yeah, it's exactly. It's it's so stressful too. I just I hate that. Um, yeah, it's 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 really it's really a pain. I'm 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 anti bike riders in the middle of the road. I yeah. am. Uh, I feel very strongly about it. Yeah, me too. I no, I hate them too. I I can't I can't stand it. I, I don't even like motorcycle riders. Like, th- at least like they're better. They're less fragile. But like, I I'm always scared to hit one of them. Like, just because like it feels like if I just slightly bump into them by accident, they'll they'll just fall over and just die. Actually, I actually know two people who died on uh, motorcycles. Uh, one was my friend George uh, from Penn State. Uh, we we hung out a little bit. Actually, we we took a speech class together. And we were like the two guys who were like older than everyone else. Like everyone else is like a freshman and sophomore. Like we were, we were. Uh, I was in my fifth year. He was a, a senior. This is the year I lived with you, uh, Tom. All right, lived, lived on the floor with you. Um, and um, we then the speech class. Um, we had we were divided into groups, and like there, like we had this rivalry with like one of the other groups. And um, the, the saying was like, so like the uh, the younger people in the groups were like. Um, They'd be like, our our Walter is better than your George. And then like the other group is like, it was like, our George is better than your Walter. And so uh, <laughs> and so uh, I actually like I thought that was funny. And then uh, I went to CC's Pizza one night. I saw George sitting by himself. I'm like, oh, hey, George. And he's like, he's like, hey, hey, what's up? And I was like, like, uh, are you here by yourself? He's like, yeah. I was like, do you want to eat together? He's like, sure. Like, that, that's how we became friends. Uh, just because oh, like, we knew each other <laughs> from that class. And um and so yeah, we, we we became friends, and unfortunately, he he passed away from a motorcycle accident. But oh no, uh, he, yeah, he was he was a super super cool guy uh, to to hang out with. It's just uh, such a shame. But um, yeah, um, I'm sorry to hear that. I, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm scared to ride on a motorcycle for those. Re- I was laughing because CC's Pizza is the place to rock. I, I know it's so fun. I, I, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they have that arcade there and there and everything. But yeah, I'm I'm scared. I, I'm like the opposite of an adrenaline junkie. Like I'll ride on roller coasters and stuff, and like I'm not afraid to be on a plane or anything like that. But I don't know. I would never want to ride on a motorcycle. I'd be. I guess I'm just scared. I'm not. I'm not fun in that way. Even some. Even some roller coasters. I won't ride anymore because it's just like I don't know. Do I need? Do I need that? But I'm not, actually. You know. According to uh, my life insurance plan, I can't ride motorcycles. So. Yeah, you know, oh, really? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm sure. Like, it'd be tough for them to find out, but if uh, if they do find out, it'll all be canceled. It's actually like a really good deal. Uh, I only have to pay into it twenty years, and then that's it. Like, just get it forever. So, um, like, increases like exponentially like each year after like after I'm done, and I'm almost done paying into it. So, um, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I think I have a, I have a plan like that as well. But I yeah. wouldn't I wouldn't get on a motor- motorcycle any anyway. You know, that made me think of we used to have this. <laughs> We used to have this poster in our driver's ed room in high school. And maybe some of you have seen this, you're familiar with it. It was a picture of Stevie Wonder, just smiling. And it says, it was like, you know, like the anti-drunk driving ads. And it said, before, you know, so Stevie Wonder is there smiling. And it says, before I drive with a drunk, I'll drive myself. (laughs) It's like, okay, like I understand the sentiment and the good message, but like, I would not do that. But like, what are the stipulations here of the situation? Because like... If I have to pick a drunk driver or Stevie Wonder, I'd probably pick the drunk driver. At least you could see we'd have a chance. But yeah. what are the stipulations with Stevie Wonder? Am I allowed to guide him? Be like, in that case, you know, is he allowed to drive slowly or does he have to drive the speed limit? What are the stipulations? I always thought that was kind of a silly poster. That, well, I don't you, think that would be a good idea. The person you pick is the high driver because, like, 
they'll, they're going to be super paranoid about police. And they're going to drive like 10 miles an hour on the highway. Like, <laughs> cause like yeah. I was, I was, I was what's in a car. Um, this, this guy, Dan, he was, <laughs> he was like, like, like everyone was drunk and like he was high and like, he, so they were like, Oh, everyone's drunk. Like he's going to drive cause he's high. So like, it seemed like a good idea. Um, and so he was, he was driving and like, we were driving along the highway and like the, 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 uh, the off ramp we had to take was like right there. So we kept going. It was like, we he's driving like seriously like 10 miles an hour on the highway. Dude. He kept driving. And then like we're, we passed by the off ramp and he just kept going. And we're like, Dan, you just missed, you missed the exit. He's like, he's like, I couldn't make it, dude. Just couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That sounds horrible. <laughs> yeah. But it was safe. It was safe. We're going 10 miles an hour on the highway. That's, that's, that's true. That's really slow, though. I'm surprised you get pulled over for going that slow. I know. I, um, that made me think of this story. So I've driven Uber on the side for nine years. I was like, I was like one of the OGs. I started in 2015. And um, when I when I went to UCF, so this is 2018, and I was driving, you know, I did a lot of late night drives. And, you know, I heard a ton of stories. I've done thousands of rides. And this guy was telling me, you know, I, I was giving him a ride and he was telling me the story about he's from a, like a small town in Alabama and you know like Uber you know isn't big there because it's a small little rinky dink town you know I don't really have any Uber drivers there so he's like back there from college break you know and telling his buddies in this small town in Alabama like hey like you should try Uber you know it's like you get this app and get someone to do it and they're like real skeptical about it like I don't know that seems really strange you know getting a <laughs> you know, getting a stranger to come pick you up. And he's like, no, no, I promise. I promise. Like it's totally normal. So his friends that he just told this to orders their first Uber ever in this rinky dink town in Alabama. And that Uber driver that picked them up got pulled over and arrested for a DUI. Wow. It's like, can you believe, like, I felt the kid was like, I felt, cause they were like, why did you recommend this? Sir? You said it was fine. He's like, no, I swear. It's not usually like that. Like what, <laughs> what are the odds of that? I mean, I guess maybe in a, well, it depends on the town. I don't know. But I always thought that was such a funny story. Could you imagine, like, trying to convince somebody, like, you know, because most of the rides are fine, at least to my knowledge. You know, it's like, you know, it's like a legit thing in the first one. You get a guy who's been drinking. Got to be joking me. I feel like that, you know, if you're a uh, a, a demented uh, the cannibal, like Hannibal Lecter or something like that, like, you feel like he, in this day and age, he would be an Uber driver, right? Because, like, he just pick people up and just take them back to their house or something. I feel like that that would be like his vocation these days. Yeah, I, I think I've heard through like throughout the years, like people have told me that I'm the first normal driver they've ever had. And that, that's that's scary. You know, well, not I mean, like the, the part that's scary, obviously, is the frequency in which, you know, like how many times you take an Uber, you're telling me oh, like I'm the first normal. Like that's that's frightening. Like there's that many like weird drivers yeah. out there, you know, but yeah. Uh, yeah, there there have been some weird ones I, I've had, but um, I mean there have been some normal ones too. So it's kind of like a mixed bag. I, oh, I was you've had, I, some, you've had some weird drivers. I was res- I was reticent to to try it at first, um, just because like I was like, yeah, if you're if you're a serial serial killer, like this is this is what you're gonna you're gonna do. Like you're gonna take yeah, people, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna uh, kidnap them, and you're gonna put them in your basement for a while. You know, kind of like your uh, Don uh, Don Tollison. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, well, you know, it's... yeah, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. That was done. Oh, no, I was just going to say, so I, I think I've done, I don't know, over 6,000 rides and deliveries. And uh, I, I've, I've never been in a situation where I felt, ner- I mean, there are definitely people where I'm like, okay, I'm ready for you to get out of my car when this is over. But I was never threatened or nervous or anything like that. I don't know. Maybe I just got luck- like lucky in that regard, but. I don't know. It was always a really positive experience for me. So it sucks to hear that people are, are not having that, obviously. Yeah, I had uh, I, like the, one of the first times I took an Uber, like there, I, we got picked up by this girl. She's like a small girl. Like she just like went zooming down the road, like 80 miles an hour. And she's like, 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 like weaving in and out of traffic. And like, she's, she's like yelling at the, the car. So she's like, well, by the way, and, like, oh she got God. us like, she got us back to our hotel, like super fast. But like I, Charlie, this is in Houston. Like Charlie and I were like, Oh my God, like we're going to die here. <laughs> so oh uh, yeah, that was, that was insane. But like, yeah, I've, I've, I've had a couple weird ones like that, but one time, actually, you know what? That's not true. I had, I had one and, and maybe I was, I don't think I was wrong. I'd say I'm like 80% sure. 80% or more sure that I was correct. So I was going, I was flying out to Vegas for work. This is like 2016, I think, or 2017. 
And all of a sudden I see from behind, like my Uber driver, it's, it's relatively early in the morning, like maybe 6 a.m. And I just see him like from the back, I see his head go like this. And and like the car was moving. So like I like grabbed his shoulder and shook him. I was like, hey, dude, are you okay? And he's just like, yeah, yeah. Like I was like, are you falling asleep? Like what's going on? And he's like, no, no, like I'm fine. And he was fine after that. But I'm, I'm pretty sure he was falling. I don't think I was imagining that. So That's, yeah. yeah, like I've, I've had a, a couple one, actually one time I had a guy that was driving way too fast, like ob obnoxiously fast. I drive like a grandpa, so, but I understand that most people don't do that. So I don't, mm. you know, I don't complain about like every, but this guy was like breaking too hard almost every, every time. And then they actually gave me a refund. I, I wrote, I was like, I kissed the ground when I arrived, you know, <laughs> I think I wrote that in my complaint. I didn't expect, I was just like letting you know, like, and I'm also not trying to like hose the guy. Right, you know that's how he makes his living, but it should be known too that that happens. I mean, I've gotten bad ratings too. I think I have a four point nine seven out of five rating, but oh. yeah, I've gotten like one stars and stuff. So, oh, really? you know, it, it's more like, but I mean, it's very rare, obviously, if I have that rating. But what did you do to earn these bad ratings? What did I do to earn the bad ratings? Yeah, like, I have no idea. Like it just pops up. Like it'll just show you like how many five and one star. But like I never had anyone like Uber content you, you know what like actually i had i actually had one one time and i i always wondered about this like uber just sent me a message and they were like like one of your riders said that you were like argumentative with them and i was like what huh. like, like i definitely i mean you you you've known me for 20 years like that's not i'm really not that way and like you know yeah. like i can just talk to to anybody so i wonder if like maybe something came out the wrong way and like it was miss kind of misinterpreted and I, and I didn't realize it or something, but I, I couldn't imagine what it was, but they're just like, Hey, like letting you know, because you've done 5,000 other rides and you have a 4.97 and you know, that's, it seems like a one-off thing or maybe it was right. a misunderstanding. So, but like, no, I, I don't know like who it was or like what they said, or, you know, I've gotten a couple, I think I've gotten like two or three one stars. So I don't know. I mean, y'all know me. Like I, I talk a lot, so that might be annoying to some people. It's, I, I would, if I, I put my money on that, for reasons I got, I got one, one star. Yeah, I, and sense. I usually give all the passengers a five, unless they're, you know, unless they're they're weird or you know, they're they're dickheads or something. But that's really rare. It's really rare. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Patrick is saying, have either of you seen the three body problem or the new Fallout show that just came out? Fallout 3 is my favorite game of all time, so a little scared to watch the show. Uh, I heard great things about Fallout. Uh, I have never played the Fallout, Fallout series, though, um, so I'm not sure if I would get it. And I heard from Tim Pool that he was saying that he was, he, he was disappointed in Fallout because, not that it was a bad show, but because it was basically like... Um, like member berries and they didn't explain anything like it would be like remember this in fallout remember this like yeah, uh, yeah. it's like very like it's, it's fan service to like um to, to those who like the games and so if you did you'll like it a lot but tim was saying that um that he was watching it with his girlfriend and so he had to pause the show every five minutes and be like okay this this is that this is that like this is why they're doing this this is this explains that so he had to explain like every five minutes um, so as someone who hasn't played fallout, like I'm worried that the show will be lost on me based on, based on what Tim said. Um, so that is the problem there. I had not seen three body problem. The issue there, um, with three, three body problem is that my wife started watching it. And so we're, we used to watch shows all the time together and now we don't watch anything together because, uh, because of the kids. So, uh, I like, I watch my TV while I'm working at night and she watches it while she's like feeding my daughter our, our daughter um and so like we're just on different schedules but she started three body problem so i can't start it until she's done because otherwise like it'll it'll go back to like episode one and she'll be annoyed so i have to wait until she's finished to to get to it so it's kind of kind of a tough tough spot here <laughs> yeah i've never played fallout either so i i you know, I, I, this this kind of I'm kind of in the same boat as, as you are, but I've I've heard it's I've heard it's decent. I can't remember who told me it was it was good, but I, same thing. Like I think it would be lost on me as well. But. Is it um? Do you know if it's a th uh, uh, first person shooter? Is it one of those? I'm I'm not even sure. I'm um, that, that, like that's that's how unfamiliar I am. Yeah, I had a I had to Google it. I don't I don't know. Um, personally, I'm not a big fan of first person shooters, but um. I mean, if it's something else, I'd give it a shot, maybe. But 
Um, I'm yeah. so behind on video games. Like I'm still, I, I've been stuck on Legend of Zelda uh, Tears of the Kingdom for like a year now, uh, almost a year, just because like with with my daughter now, I just have no time. At least like when yeah. I had one kid, it was it was okay. Like I still have time to do it, but with two kids, just like my time is just evaporated. Um, mm -hmm. It's just all gone. So I imagine that like in the near future, like once once my daughter is sleep trained and everything like that, I'll I'll have more time. Plus like in the summer too. Um, but like during the, during the football season, I don't play video games at all. Uh, just cause like, I want to concentrate on football and everything like that. And I want like my, my private time, like all, all my free time to be used on like concentrating on like trying to figure out like, uh, picks and whatnot and, and what that, like that, I would just want to think about that, you know? So. Right. Right. I I've been kind of just, I haven't been playing much either. Like I've been playing the same super Mario Kaizo hacks, but on my streams, but just to, you know, I'm just there to talk anyway. I have been playing a lot of Rocket League. I love Rocket League. That's one of the best games I've ever played. You want to you know something kind of interesting that happened to me? I, I don't even know who it was, but someone in the chat on Rocket League, they're like, Quacky T, the streamer. Oh, really? <laughs> like, oh, That's yeah. Like, you know, I thought that was kind of neat, but I, I have no idea who it was, and they didn't. Like, I don't think you can manually type during the game, like the game started. And, and they okay. Left, but. I thought that was that was uh, that was kind of neat, but I've been I've been playing a ton of Rocket League. You you never played it, have you? No, I don't even know what it is. It's I mean the best way I can describe it is it's soccer, but with race cars. It's it's so addicting. It's so addicting. Like I don't yeah. even like soccer. It's it's so much fun, you know. And you can do all sorts of interesting, you know, like wild maneuvers with the car to you know hit the ball and angle it. It's it's a lot of fun. I've been playing a, a lot, <laughs> but. I would actually stream it, but I can't figure out how to, you know, because I'm not, tech, I'm not that tech savvy. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, sometimes I get that way too. I got that way with Arkham City, where I couldn't kind of, I kind of couldn't get past one part, and I didn't have the time. And I think I went about a year or so before I played it again, mm -hmm. and then finally, I couldn't get past the Mister Freeze boss on the Arkham games. Yeah. So I did a similar thing to what you're, what you're just describing. So I, I, I get it. Yeah, my my son and I are playing uh, Luigi's Mansion Three. Um, by playing, I mean, he, he'll take the controller and he'll spin around with Luigi a few times and then he gives it to me. And I'm like, <laughs> so I have to like, I've, I've done all the ghost killing. It's actually a good game. Oh, okay. It's a lot, a lot of fun. You, you like Mario princess and toad get captured at, at this hotel and they try to capture Luigi too, but he breaks free. And so he has to save his friends. And like, like, uh, he has this like vacuum cleaner at the vacuum and ghosts and stuff like that. Um, it's uh, it's a lot of fun and like, you have to explore this big hotel and you have to solve puzzles to get to different floors and like like each 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 main boss on the floor is just like this special ghost and you have to figure out how to like kill them like um like i just uh with my son i beat uh the second floor which is like the restaurant floor and the ghost there is the chef and like basically with the ghost you have to like blind them with your flashlight and then suck them in uh but with chef he blind he blocks the flashlight with a frying pan and so what you have to do is uh you have to take the food in the kitchen and you have to like throw it at him so it knocks his frying pan away and then you have to blind him and then suck him in um and so oh, wow. uh, it's really cool like you have to figure out like ways to beat these ghosts and you have to you have to figure out puzzles and whatnot it's a, it's, a, it's a really fun game that was uh that was originally on gamecube wasn't it uh i think that was luigi's mansion 2 that was on gamecube um was it? Okay. this I is luigi's mansion yeah this is luigi's mansion 3 so oh um, okay okay the third yeah. one yeah, yeah, there, yeah. So I think the first one's on N sixty four. I think. Okay, okay. I, maybe it was the first one I played. I swear the first it was the first one was on GameCube. Or you think it was the second one? It might. I don't know. It's one or is one or two that was on GameCube because so I played that as well. Um, I didn't play it that much, but I, I beat three myself. Um, and then now I'm playing with my son because my son loves <laughs> Mario so much. Um, uh, in fact, like he's got he's got uh, stuffed animals that are Mario's. Like he's got Raccoon Mario and regular Mario, and he sleeps with them. Uh, because ever since he saw Super Mario movie on New Year's Eve, like it's just Mario, Luigi, Toad, Princess, Bowser, Bowser, yeah. and Donkey Kong. Like that's like all that's he awesome. says. Um, and <laughs> at, at daycare, um, they were talking about feelings, and uh, so but the 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 girl who runs the daycare was telling me this. It's funny. Um, they were like, uh, like Connie, do you know any feelings? And he, he's like, he's like scared. He's like I'm scared. And and uh, they're like, of what? He's a ghost. And so, like, um, and so the the girl was like, "Oh, finally something that's not Mario." And she's like, "Oh, really? You're scared of ghosts?" He's like, "Yeah, ghosts in Luigi's Mansion." <laughs> <laughs> Just when you thought it, <laughs> there's one thing that's funny. That's funny. yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> geez, I haven't, um, game. Do you remember the Dreamcast? Did you ever have a Dreamcast? I know of it. I didn't have the it. Though. Dream. It, it didn't, yeah. it wasn't a popular hit. I remember I had a friend who had it, and there were a couple of decent games, but it never really, it never really made it. No, after the but, Genesis, like Sega never had anything. They had Sega CD. You remember that? Um, yeah, I never had one, but I do, I do remember it. Yeah, I remember my my friend's brother had Sega CD. I'm like, oh, this is so cool CDs, and like it just never never <laughs> yeah. went anywhere. Um, and yeah, dream, I remember Dreamcast. I don't know anyone who had Dreamcast. Um, I do remember I it though. One, yeah, I had one friend, and I only ever played it when I was. Uh, yeah, I, I always thought that was interesting because it seemed like it was going to be so. Like you know, it's going to be like the next like big big system, and it never really it never really yeah. panned out at all. Never, it's and like Sonic, fun. Sonic's on like Nintendo now. Like they, uh, it's funny that they brought bought the rights to him. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, Love to eat says Super Bowl Fifty worst Super Bowl ever. Just saw it again. That's the Denver uh, Carolina one. Yeah, it was uh, kind of a boring game, wasn't it? Uh, it wasn't too bad. I mean, worst Super Bowl ever. I thought nine it was Niners Chargers. Like that game was disgustingly boring because it was such a blowout. Like uh, the Chargers were not competitive at all. At least like Broncos Panthers for a while, you didn't know who's gonna win. Um, and it was kind of close for, for most of the game. Um, but Niners chargers was a complete blowout. So I, I'll say like, that was the, the worst I've ever seen. What about Seahawks Broncos? Well, I, I like I know, that I game. That was a blowout, but you know, it was always like, okay, Peyton Manning's on the other side. Like you never know with him. Like what if he goes nuts? Like, and I feel like that there was something always in the back of my mind that was like, this lead for Seattle is just not safe because Peyton Manning's there. You know, that's that's how I, I felt about that game. I remember, I remember thinking that too. But I, I thought that game was interesting too, even though I, I'm not really a Seahawks fan at all. Uh, one of my most hated teams, actually. But they scored a touchdown. Like they scored so many different ways. It was. Remember, Percy Harvin was injured the entire season, and then he ran back the opening kickoff the second half. Yeah, that was the dagger of that game. It, it was, you know, maybe you know. The Broncos could come back. They had the best offense in league history, at least up up to that point. And then Percy Harvin it hasn't played a game all year. It cashes the opening kickoff. It was like that. It was over the forty three to eight. That was score got me forty three mm-hmm. to eight. Yeah, that's crazy how how lopsided that was. But yeah, for, yeah, for a while I was like, yeah, I'm like this is not safe because I, I I had Seattle. I'm like this, this is not safe. Yeah, Manny, um, Manny could come back. Um, didn't happen, but still, um, love to that asking. Was, that was ten years ago. Yeah, that was uh, that was the first Super Bowl uh, I watched with my wife. Um, yeah, and she was uh, that was the first Super Bowl she ever watched, apparently, according to her. Really? Yeah, she never had any interest, uh, and she still doesn't. <laughs> but but she was dating me, so uh, she had. I guess she had to watch it. We we had people over. We used to have big Super Bowl parties, but that is uh, it's a relic of the past now. Um, yeah, with, yeah. With oh, love to eat easily the 07 Giants. I think. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Easily. Yeah, because the Chiefs had an, a very easy first game against Miami. Miami is missing like half its roster. Um, but then, like, yeah, the, the Chiefs almost lost to the Bills. Like, that was a tough game. But then the Ravens were a no show. The Ravens didn't run the ball against the Chiefs, um, which I think that's why they signed uh, Derrick Henry. But, like, the Chiefs' defense was great against the pass and, like, not good against the run. And so the Ravens, like, oh, let's throw nonstop. It's okay. Yeah, it's like, that didn't work at all. So, um, it's just a bad game plan by the Ravens, and then the Super Bowl is you know, it was tight, but again, the Giants played the Patriots, the team that hadn't lost, so uh, um, yeah, and they played both those they teams, beat, tight. yeah, they beat the Bucks in the first round, the wild card, then they beat the number one seeded Cowboys. That was the <laughs> that's my teammate, that's my quarterback, <laughs> T.O. That's that, that infamous yeah. interview, that was that yep. game, and then they, of course, oh, the, this this is a game that'll live in infamy for me, yeah, the, the, they the, the red, play. the red face game. <laughs> That was like, against the Packers, that NFC Championship game. Yeah. That one hurt me. It looked like Coughlin's, Coughlin's, uh, Coughlin's face is going to fall off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, geez, remember, who was their kicker? Lawrence Tynes, right? Yeah, New York Tynes, yeah. In New York Tynes. <laughs> I just remember <laughs> I remember the game-winning field goal in overtime. Uh, 23-20 was the final. And I remember the one that he the one that he ended up making to win the game in overtime – was one yard longer than a field goal attempt he had missed earlier. And I remember secretly hoping because he'd missed two. He had missed two at the end of the game. 
Mm -hmm. I remember thinking, well, maybe, maybe they'll punt it. But as soon as he lined up, I knew I was like, how many is this guy going to miss? Yeah. That, that hurt. That hurt so bad. That was a great Packers team. They were 13 and three that year. You know, it's funny. They lost two games. two, Two of those losses were to the bears who were like, I don't know, five and 11 or something that year. Mm. They were terrible, and the Bears beat them both times. And their other loss was to Dallas. That was the game that we first saw Aaron Rodgers come in. Remember the yeah. Thursday night game? Yep. And uh, but I just remember because Favre never won in Dallas, and they were the one seed. So with them knocked out, Green Bay hosted the NFC Championship game, and I was like, we're going to the Super Bowl. And I thought we could be the team. The Packers could be the team to knock off that undefeated Patriots team. And I know I told you this a thousand times, but it's worth repeating. All of a sudden, like two days before the game, I thought. Well, I guess it's possible the Giants could win. <laughs> and then as soon as I thought that I I knew I knew Green Bay was gonna lose. Some somehow, like deep down, I knew they were gonna lose. That hurt. That hurt. Uh, Favre that. always had issues in domes. Um, it's funny that you know he lost to Dallas there. Like he always had issues playing in, in at New Orleans, at Minnesota gave him problems. Um, like he always he had issues there for some reason. I don't know why. It's just like domes gave him gave him problems. Jeez, remember the NFC when when uh, the Vikings and Saints that game? Oh, yeah. I remember thinking because I thought for sure the Vikings were going to. I was like, Far is going to get another Super Bowl. He blew it, man. He did, dude. Just run for the first down. Just go down. He why but, did he throw across his body like that? To be fair, they were uh, trying to injure him. <laughs> like they, they were they were getting paid no, to injure. I, I know that. I know that too, but. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess that 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 probably looms a lot larger than maybe I originally thought. But man, like even in incomplete, like in a dome, it should be you know like a fifty-three yarder is a lot easier than out outside, you know. So they they yeah. could have like do anything, but don't turn it over, and that's what happened. Right. Yeah. That's uh, yeah, that's why. Was, was that Tracy Porter? I think so. Yeah. Because he because he had the pick six against in, you know against in the Super Bowl against the uh, the, the Colts. From Indiana. What, what wasn't that Tracy Porter? Yeah, from Indiana. Yeah, he went to yeah, Indiana. Indiana. Yeah, no, Indiana University. That's uh, that's where he went. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Uh, Rondé yeah. Barber, most underrated. Yeah, that was um, always great. I always wondered, like Rondé and Tiki look exactly alike. Like, I always wondered if, like, they always if they ever switch places. Like, not not in football, but like I mean, like in interviews and stuff like that. Like, did they ever switch? Like, I feel like they could do it and no one would notice. Um, that, that'd I'm, be I'm sure they did. I uh, I used to date a girl who was a twin, and she said in high school, they would like, take... oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And she told me that they would take tests and stuff for each other sometimes. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty. Remember, oh, Tiki Barber, though. I remember when he was hating on Eli Manning? Mm-hmm. And then he's like, I'm done here. And he retired. And the next year, they won the Super Bowl. Yep. What a freaking <laughs> dork. I'm sorry, I Tiki, but that, that I shouldn't say that, but that had to hurt him. You know, and he was, I mean, he was a great runner, though. You have to give him that. Oh, yeah, yeah. But you know what? He 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 did have a leg to stand on. I mean, Eli to that point was so inconsistent. I mean, he was inconsistent his whole career. I still think he gets in the Hall of Fame, and I think he should. Oh, I don't is, think he should. Oh, come on. Really? No, I don't think he should. Tell me I want I want to hear why. I'm had, not gonna, I probably won't disagree, but I, I am interested. I think he he's got to go in. He had two great playoff runs, and that's it. Like he, just, the rest of his career is very mediocre. Um, I just I don't think there's anything special about him. I don't think he's a Hall of Fame player. Like he had he had Hall of Fame moments for sure. He had, he had two great games, uh, but again, like he was he was carried by his defenses. If he didn't have like Michael Strahan. And all those guys, and then then the next Super Bowl run with Jason Pierre-Paul and all those great defensive players. If he didn't have that great defense, he would he never would have won any Super Bowls. Um, and he like like did he he came up clutch for sure and in, in, like big moments. The helmet catch, one of the most iconic moments in NFL history. But I, I just don't think he was a great player. I just thought he's a good, he's a decent, good quarterback for a lot of his career. Uh, a, a lot of his career, he was mediocre as well. Um, but he never stood out to me as being great. And like, the like he could have been replaced by so many quarterbacks for those two teams and they would have won the Super Bowl. In fact, I think if you replace him with like the same draft class, Philip Rivers, put Philip Rivers on the Giants, I think they win three Super Bowls at least. Um, 
at least, well, at least two, but definitely I, I think three is possible. So I think Eli held that team back a lot um, at, at times. So I, no, I don't think he's, I, I, I do agree that he will get in because of his name, but if his name is Eli Jones, he never would be a, a, like in consideration for the Hall of Fame. Remember when Brandon Jacobs gained one yard on that fourth and one? Yeah. It was, it was Jake. Wait, was it Jacobs or um, Jacobs? Who was the, I can't think of the other running back now. Oh, Bob uh, Bradshaw. Yeah. Was right, Bradshaw right. Or, or was it, was it, no, it was Jacobs. He I think it was up, Jacobs. Yeah. Yeah. But like right before the helmet, couple plays before the helmet catch mm-hmm. fourth and one. Remember Kevin boss, the tight end. He had that long reception on that drive. Mm-hmm. That was, but I, I don't know. I just, I feel like, I mean, they took down the greatest team of the 21st century. Twice. He or the defense. The yeah, defense held I, Tom Brady to, to 14, right? Yeah, I no, I, I know, but I just I just think on principle to do that to take down the undefeated team, that that changed like it's 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 iconic. And I think he I think he should get in just I mean on that alone. That was that was one of the most memorable things ever. I was so glad that happened. On that alone. So like if, if I mean I'm exaggerating it, a bit. I still think he, he should make I mean for his name, and he has two Super Bowl rings. And the magnitude of the Super Bowl wins, and they were both exciting. Like they're both memorable Super Bowls, I guess, in the sense that they came right down to the wire, especially the first one. I think that carries more magnet, like or that carries more more weight than it should, maybe. But like that's part of that's part of why he'll 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 get in too. I think. I, but well, I, 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 I think, like I said, I, I I think you're right that he will get in, but he didn't take the team down. He like his defense is. Yeah. I know held I the know. Patriots to like minimal outputs. If and like I said, you could take half the quarterbacks in the league and put hit them on the Giants, and they would have won that game. It was like Eli didn't do anything special outside of the helmet play, which was like I still don't understand how he got that pass off. But like outside of that, like he didn't like he just wasn't special. Uh, he just he was good. He was decent. He like he was a good game manager for the most part. Um, I think that's what he was like a glorified game manager. I, I don't disagree, but I, I I still think he should be in just because of the magnitude of the Super Bowls. Like that, I don't think that'll ever happen again. Like same quarterback. To, and I, I again, I agree with you. I know he was riding on the backs of the defense, but it's like I don't know. It's like you get you get a you get a you get a car and you get a car. Like you're you happen to be the quarterback twice to beat this team. Good on you, man. Like you yeah, you know. Well, hypothetically, I, let's say. Um, do you think he'll well, be first ballot? Then is another question too. I don't think he'll be first ballot. I think he'll be like third ballot, second, third. I don't think first. Um, I, what hypothetically, if if, uh, if Nick Foles, um, say like Nick Foles, for hypothetically, was on the Chiefs last year, and Mahomes goes down, and Foles leads the Chiefs to the Super Bowl win last year, does he get in? Because he has he'd have two Super Bowl rings at that point, and I'd say like his career about the same as Eli Manning's. Otherwise, if you take away the two, two rings, like, like uh, what has Eli done that Foles hasn't? Are you asking me if I think he should be, or do you think, or do I, think uh, no, I, I, no, hypothetically, if, if, if Foles came in from a Holmes last year and won those four games and won the Super Bowl, and, and won his second ring, would you, would you say he belongs in the hall of fame? Uh, I think if he wins the second Super Bowl MVP, I think it's I, I think he'll get in. And I think you can make the argument because it's because of the the weight that the story car- that the narrative carries, because you never see that like a backup or, or very rarely see that a backup quarterback do well with the, you know, with the team. So I think that helps him stand out more than the statistics will. And if he got a second Super Bowl MVP, that's like, wow, like he, he's kind of he, he holds a unique uh, place in the NFL. So I think that helps this case, and I think because it's so unique, like that, and like in, in a similar spirit, like this is why I think Robert Ori should be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, you know, but I mean, like Ori came up clutch a lot more than than these players that we're talking about, though. Too. But the difference I, there is that Robert Ori was actually clutch, whereas Eli Manning scored what seventeen and how many thirteen or the other? What was the other output? There's sixteen. What was the other Giants Patriots Super Bowl scores? 21 17. 21, oh, 21 17. okay. So, yeah, so he scored 17 and 21, I guess, uh, in two Super Bowls. Um, that's not impressive. It's not right. good. It's not, yeah, I, I understand that. But 
I guess I'm I'm thinking more like along the lines of falls now. So right. so I, I guess what I'm saying like with with falls like it would be a unique situation twice that he did something that you know like how often does a backup quarterback do that you know especially in the modern era. It's like in the modern era you're about, your starting quarterback goes down you're pretty much toast it, with with some degree of variant you know with some exceptions. No. Flacco for is it was a great example this past year you know like there's there's some exception but. I don't know. Like, I think like. Eli oh, hold on. Well, well, let me let me see this. Would you put Joe Flacco in the Hall of Fame right now? No. Okay. Okay. I agree. But if flat. Okay. You just said Flacco had a, a great run with the Browns. What if the Browns had won the Super Bowl this past year and Flacco got a second? Would you put him in the Hall of Fame then? <laughs> what would, would I or 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 would, would no no yeah, no I asked you would the you. Argument? Like if you if you had the vote, would you vote for him to be a Hall of Famer? I mean, I think I. Could. <laughs> like, wow, it's, it's, I'm really it's, I'm really getting roasted over here. It's like a four no. game run. Like I just I like I feel like you have to be great your whole career and not just in a couple of moments. And it's not like Eli was that great in, in in his games. Again, like he had some great moments, but not the whole games. And it was his defense. And like I said, you could. You could put twenty quarterbacks, twenty different quarterbacks on those teams. They would have, they would have won Super Bowl. Like Eli was not special. You know, he was good. He was good. He wasn't great. He was good. Right, right. And and again, I I, I don't disagree. I just think he, I think it's the the uniqueness of the victories that he did have, and two Super Bowl MVPs is hard to ignore. Even though I agree, he didn't. It, it, it wasn't because of him. You know, he was. It's like just don't just don't blow it for us, sort of situation, mm -hmm. you know. And and that can then that can work. We've we've seen that work many, you know. Many. I mean, Trent Dilfer with the Ravens. That was a good, that was a good example. No, I actually really like Trent Dilfer. I know he wasn't like the greatest, but you know that 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 can work. But I don't know. I, I still think he has to get in because of the weight that that the Super Bowl wins carry. I I, I remember being so astonished. The, the the Giants that Eli Manning and the Giants beat that team that was that was so crazy that was so that was so crazy to me yeah you, you, you liked the Giants though did you not in that game uh well the first time I did like the Giants um I remember that because I, I took the Giants yeah what was it 38 35 I think was the final yeah that week 17 uh, game <laughs> to to ask uh, to, to roast you some more <laughs> um would you put Chris Snee and Kareem McKenzie in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> they were uh, they were the right side of the offensive line for both Super Bowls, <laughs> right guard and right tackle. They both won. They both had big moments in the Giants game and in, in against the Patriots in the Super Bowl. Like like why why is Eli special because he played quarterback? You know I, I just I, I just don't get like I feel like the defense won both games, and so like yeah I, like of course Michael Strahan's in the Hall of Fame of course, um, and then you have. Um, on the the other side, you have Jason Pierre-Paul. You had uh, Justin Tuck. Like so many great players there. Like I feel like they should get the recognition before Eli, and I think they do. And um, let's see how many defensive players uh, were on the same team. I actually don't think um, there were that many similarities. I think they had all different starters defensively. Um, I, I think I want to say uh, I would say Pierre-Paul was on the roster, but he wasn't a starter. I'm not sure though. What for the first one? No, 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 he wasn't. No, he wasn't. Um, I think there, there, I don't know, I don't know if there's any overlap for the defensive players, which is pretty remarkable. They, they did have a solid, I mean, the second Super Bowl, like they had a solid, like, you know, Victor Cruz. He was, he had some good years. Yeah. Manningham, of course, he had that great catch. And that was, that was a great throw by Manning in that second World Super Bowl. But I mean, it's just, you know, it's just one play. I'm not trying to. And and also they could have oh, easily. Matthias Kiwanuka, sorry, that that's the one. That, that's the guy I was thinking of. Kiwanuka was, I think, he was either a rookie or second year um, when they won the first the first time, and then uh, then he was a veteran for them uh, the second time. That's the only repeat starter they had on the Giants. Yeah, but defensively, not offensively. Offensively, really? they had a couple. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, defensively, they had Strahan, Cofield, Robbins, Umanura, Kiwanuka, Pierce, Mitchell, Ross, Madison, Butler, Wilson. And then the second time, they had Tuck, Joseph, Canty, Pierre Paul, Kiwanuka, Bowley, Webster, Ross, Phillips, uh, Roland, Grant. 
Uh, I, no, Aaron, Corey, Aaron, sorry, Aaron Ross. Aaron Ross was uh, the other overlap, the cornerback. Corey was, Webster. Yeah, Aaron Ross is a rookie first time and then uh, the second time. Um, I'll never forget Corey Webster intercepted Favre's last pass as a mm-hmm. backer. I remember because I remember Donald Driver was out there at the coin flip. That game was going to overtime. And, you know, you can't see the coin from the camera angle. Mm-hmm. And Donald, like, you could just see his body language. He goes, like, we, we receive. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, even though Green Bay didn't deserve to win this game, they're going to win this game. No. And Far got intercepted by freaking Corey Webster. Yeah. Set up the game winner. Oh, it's wild. I, I, I always wanted to see a, uh, a, a, Ro- a Brady Far Super Bowl or Brady Rogers Super Bowl. I feel like we got robbed. Um, Twice we got robbed of yep. that, or well, once once each res- respectively. Right. Once each, yeah. Um, but we did get, we did get uh, Brady Mahomes at least, uh, but that was that was pretty lopsided. Um, yeah, let's yeah. get to more comments. Uh, Lefty says that shows Andy Reid is the goat. A look at what he's had to work with. Yeah, uh, he's uh, he had some uh, with Andy Reid. He's always like he turned bad quarterbacks into okay quarterbacks. He turned okay quarterbacks into good quarterbacks. He turned good quarterbacks into great quarterbacks, and then he turned great quarterbacks into the best of all time. <laughs> That's what he did with Mahomes. Uh, he, like Alex Alex Smith, he had playing really well. McNabb, he had playing really well. AJ Feely, um, yeah, AJ Feely was was awesome uh, that that one year, um, and he had a couple other moments as well, and other and other times. And then Jeff, remember Jeff Garcia? He resurrected Jeff Garcia's career. Um, like everyone thought Jeff, Jeff Garcia was done. So, yeah, yeah, Reed, I remember Reed, Jeff Garcia. Yeah, Reed was awesome. Um, Cassandra says I'm with Walt. I did all my home. I do all my work at night, but I hate going to bed when it's starting to get light. It really screws you up. Yeah, I have. Um, I have like really dark uh, shades uh, in my room, so it's tough to tell. But still, like when I'm going upstairs and like brushing my teeth, I can still see the light coming through the window. So yeah, it's just. Uh, I, I really hate going to bed when it's light out. It just feels weird. Um, Vampire house. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Actually, kidding. when my uh, I have a cousin who lives in Germany. She was visiting uh, my uh, my my family. Like this is when I just got out of college, so I was still living with my, par- with my parents. And so she was she was staying there as well. And. Uh, she she comments. She's like, "Walt, you're like a vampire. I always I don't see you during the day. I always like see you working at night." <laughs> so I thought that was like, that's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, Sue says they probably didn't pass the clock changing bill because there was no money. Yeah, in there. right. Yep. No, someone didn't grease the wheels. You got to grease the wheels uh, to get something going. And in, in Congress, uh, of course, these people these people need their millions upon millions as if uh, they didn't make enough um, illegally s- stock trading. Um, yeah. Uh, is it, the clock changing bill. Yeah, I love to eat. Uh, LOL, clips. Uh, day for night. Oh, movie. make a movie out of it. Yeah, Remember the thirty know. days of night movie. Speaking of vampire in Alaska, they have thirty straight days of night. I think that would be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, what you say? You don't think that would you would be into the thirty days of night situation? Like in Alaska, like I can't remember what time yeah. of year it is, but it's, it's nighttime for thirty for like a month. Well, yeah, I mean, and then yeah, and then it's the opposite during summer. Um, that's what like in St. Petersburg, uh, Russia, it's called uh, White Nights um, during the summer because like it doesn't get dark. Um, it gets oh, like this, it's like this, this like weird, it's like this weird white hue at night, and they call it White Nights. Um, that's interesting. How does that work? Isn't the isn't the Earth still flat or? What? what do you mean? <laughs> you ever you ever see that Simpsons where there it was the there's this old Simpsons episode where they have a um they have a film festival in Springfield because they're last in like education mm-hmm. and they have Principal Skinner like tied to a stake and he's like I'm telling you people the Earth revolves around the sun and Grandpa says like, burn him. <laughs> I was I was uh, love that uh, that little uh, snippet. Yeah, you, you want to know? So I don't. It was maybe like five years ago or so. They made a documentary about the flat the flat Earth Society or, or whatever you know group they are. I just thought it was like a couple people. I mean, it shows you what I know. But you know, up until I saw that documentary, I think it's called like Behind the Curve or Beyond the Curve. I think it's Behind mm-hmm. the Curve. <laughs> and I thought it was just like a like a handful or two of people like on Twitter or something. I didn't know they had conventions and stuff for this. Like there are people that are really into the flat earth thing. I didn't realize it was like, it was had that large of a following. Have you seen this document? I, I know you don't like documentaries. I, yeah, I don't like documentaries. Um, 
I I know of people who think that way, and I'm like, like, why are you stupid? Like, it's just like, like, find something else to believe in that's like a little bit more believable. You know, like Don Lemon once on CNN, he said like, oh, that plane was swallowed by a black hole. You know, like that is just a stupid. But like, at least like, you know, there is like a point zero 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 one percent chance that he was right. You know, I I. It's, I think you meant wormhole, not black hole, but you know, um, I, yeah. I don't know, but, but like that, at least like, like there's not evidence to, uh, to refute, to refute it, but like, there's so much evidence to refute the flat earth things. Like, like, why do you believe this stupid nonsense? So it's like, again, yeah. like believe in something like that, like people can't like refute right away, you know? You think, you think, you think you, their time is spent better on other conspiracies. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> no, I agree. I agree. I was I was just amazed at the doc. I recommend the documentary. Not be, I mean, I'm not like oh, they convinced me. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> but I was just I was so shocked that there was it had such a such a. I didn't realize it had that big, that big of a following. I guess I don't know. You know, they only let me out of my cage twice a week for the show, <laughs> and the and the and the subsequent stream. So yes, you know, it tells you it tells you what I know. Hey, man, you know, real quick, I wanted to tell you, you see all these ads on YouTube. There's this Guinness beer ad with Jason Momoa. Have you seen this one? And he says, I'm 2% Irish, and he's drinking a Guinness. No, I have not seen that. Yeah, he says he's in the... I, but I, I, pay, I pay premium. I don't see any ads on YouTube. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I, you, you'll probably miss it, though. But it made me think, you know, it's meant to be funny. You know, he said he's 2% Irish. Have you ever done one of those like ancestry.com or like what or like what's it called? Like the 23 and me, or like they can they can trace like your family tree and, mm -hmm. and, and stuff. Have you ever done something like that? Uh, no, but my parents have both of them, and so I don't need to do it. So I, I know exactly what I am. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I don't want I don't want my DNA anywhere on like any more records. I mean, not for it. Yeah, so I, I actually, like, that's like one of the two know. ways. It's one of the two ways I found out I'm I'm a person of color. Um, I like the first way. Uh, the Coalition of Communities of Color changed the definition of Slavic people, and they say Slavic people are now uh, per people of color. So, uh, like, so, like, so I, I'm a person of color. But not only am I a person of color, I'm also brown because uh, my mom tested like 12 percent arabic so really? now yeah so i'm arabic and slavic i'm a double whammy uh but then again like my dad is like eight percent viking which is like not uh the most pleasant thing because you know when the vikings visited uh uh, uh russia or ukraine when they're from you know they didn't come like bringing flowers and you know they yeah, didn't go on picnics right, right. like so you know, there's like uh, a dubious, the uh, there's a dubious part of my family history there. Although I like to believe that, like, you know, it's the rare exception where they went on a picnic and they had some fun. Um, yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I I do that. Also, also, I don't. I mean, I don't know. There's always would always be a question for me. It's like, where are they coming up with these percentages? You know, I mean, I'm sure that there's a way, but I mean, I'm not trying to unearth and unpack the whole topic now, but. My my favorite one of my favorite South Parks is when uh, Randy Marsh test does that test and he comes to like he's like forty percent Neanderthal or something like that and then he like <laughs> begins acting like a Neanderthal. <laughs> I, I haven't seen that one. I haven't it seen really that one. Good. It was really good. It's really good. I recommend it. Um, let's get to yeah, some more. Yeah. What'd you say? You'll have to test on me the episode name. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I'll I'll I'll, I'll remember it. It was it was a really good one, <laughs> and like, it was, I love any Randy Marsh uh, episode. He's oh yeah yeah he, no he's good. He's so great. And uh, remember that like the one season where he was that that singer. I forget who the it was. The a lord a lord. He as actually he like Randy Marsh was actually Lord <laughs> the singer. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's awesome, Carmen. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate you. She also says December something 2012. Uh, yeah, Slew also saying yeah. that. Oh, we're back on Doomsday. Yeah, yeah, we're a little behind we're here. Back in on the our Doomsday planning. Yeah, yeah. I love that he says Howard Stern. I see OJ was great. Um, uh, that yeah, OJ passed away. That was uh, I was a little surprising. I, I didn't know he had cancer, but um, yeah. Um, I remember I remember uh, that car chase very clearly. We we're watching in middle school. I remember being like. No, OJ didn't do it. Like, how could he could definitely not do it? Yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah. <laughs> like, I remember yeah, thinking yeah. that. Uh, but I was, I, a naive, I, was a, I was a naive 12 year old. 
I was, you know, cause I was 1994 yeah. and, uh, I think it was June 17th, was it June 17th, 1994? They made a documentary about it. It was, it was really good. But I, I can't remember the anchor from ESPN that was doing the interview, but I'll never forget what he says. He goes, Howard, you know, when, the, like the, you know, he was, you know, on the run from the police, and he goes, Howard Cosell always used to say, the juice is loose, but I can assure mm-hmm. you, he never met anything like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember, <laughs> I remember, I remember that. Yeah, um, I mean, Howard, the great Howard, the great Howard Cosell. Love to eat says 2012, the world ended. And as far as Romy Cornell right. was fired and Andy Reid was hired, the rest is history. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I thought Romy Cornell would be a good coach. Uh, so I you know I was definitely wrong about that. Um, <laughs> love to eat says, I love Russian uh, ethnic food. Um, thing about Russian food is like they, they pickle everything, they even pickle their pickles, but like they pickle watermelon uh it's disgusting i don't i don't get it they, they don't uh, they don't think ketchup should be a thing all their soda's flat um oh, we, i just uh how is all this soda flat they, that's just how they like it or what every time i've been to a russian restaurant uh, always like they they bring out this pitcher of coke and it's all flat uh every time they never have ketchup i always ask for ketchup They're like what is this ketchup they, they, it's like they never heard of it um and then uh there's always like this main course they bring out this fish head it's just sitting there looking at you and like no one eats it. Just bring it out. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's just horrible. And then they like they serve like cow tongue or like horse tongue or something. Um, and uh, it was just like not terrible, but like I just don't want to eat tongue. Um, like I, the most I eat is like friend. Like they have fries. Uh, it's like, but it's not like real French fries. It's kind of like the tater sliders. I don't know what they call them, but like yeah, they have uh, some some of the foods fine, but like. It's just a weird food. I just, I don't know. I'd never, I was never a big fan, even though I'm Russian. So I can, I can bad mouth. Yeah. There's, uh, there's no way I'd eat any of that. Yeah. I yeah. You think, had, I yeah. Like, and, and there are like 25 courses. If you go to a Russian restaurant, they just keep bringing food out. Like, and it doesn't stop. Like you think you're done. It's like, oh, oh. And then they get to dessert, but then they're like, oh no, here's, here's another entree course. It's like, well, I thought we were on dessert. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> so it just doesn't end. This is like keeps oh, bringing geez. the food up. Um, uh, <laughs> let's see. He says, not gay. But Walter <laughs> looks like a chad. <laughs> it's not a beard. It's facial hair, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I uh, do the best with what I got there. Love to eat, but I appreciate you, man. Respect. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Sue says, uh, certainly Rashi Rice will be an Uber <laughs> driver when he's deserving his suspension. Oh well, maybe he's, he's like, maybe he's related to that crazy lady who's driving super fast because <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. he got pulled over. He, no, he, he, he was driving like 118 um, when he got into an accident. So, yeah, he's, uh, it's not oh. good. Not good. Um, Loves, he says, I played RPG as a kid, but not so much on a console. Um, and he says Neo Geo. I remember Neo Geo. I remember uh, Neo Geo too. The arcades. Do you remember? Do you remember in television? That was the first video game console I ever played. I was like five, four or five when I played it, and then I got a Nintendo when I was six. Um, but in television, had this game called Advanced Dun- Dungeons and Dragons. It wasn't had nothing to do with Dungeons and Dragons, like the like the game people play nowadays. But um, it was basically like you have you like three brothers. And you have to traverse this like these mountains and like you go into each cave and like each cave is like different color. And depending on the color is like difficulty. Like if you go into like a gray cave, gray cave, you only have to fight like rats. Um, but like if you go into like a red cave, you're going to fight like snakes and there's like demons. And like if you go like the dark red cave, they're like dragons and like they'll mess you up if you're not prepared. And you have to like get supplies and you have to make it across uh this land and like you have to get an axe or a boat if you want to traverse some stuff and you get to, you eventually get to this like mountain and you have to you have to fight two three-headed dragons and kill them to get the crown and then you get the crown you win the game um but it was uh, it's called what in intel in television intel in, yeah intel like the company intel in television um and the game was called advanced dungeons and dragons you should stream it it's, it's a lot of fun um <laughs> It's really, really fun. Uh, so I, mean, I was a kid and like, I, I feel like it would hold up these days, you know, like the graphics are terrible, but, uh, but like there's a lot of tension. And like, I heard people comment as, as saying it's like the first survival horror game ever. 
because really? you because you hear these noises when you get into the cave when like you you go to a cave and they'll be like Psh! and you're you're like you have no like vision if you have to like go up and down or left and right and then like like your path will open up and you'll eventually see it but you don't know you don't see what's on the horizon like you'll hear if you like you'll hear a snake you'll, you'll hear a snake hiss or like you'll hear a dragon like like breathing fire but it's in the distance and you don't know where the hell it is and like it's terror dude it's terrifying when you're a kid you're like is it around the oh. corner here and like you like sneak a little bit and then you like backtrack and then you sneak a little bit more and then like the stupid snake comes out of nowhere and kills you uh it's it's so fun it's so fun. i'm gonna i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to find some youtube videos on it's, on on this i've never i've never heard of it yeah it was i mean it was a game from uh, the, uh, the early 80s yeah so or mid 80s wow. but yeah uh, i i feel like i don't know i feel like they could redo the game but um the uh, i like it's yeah you should you should definitely check it out or anyone listening you should check it out um because it, it was a lot of fun. It, it was it was it was like terrifying, like and like the de like the demons were the worst because they didn't make any noise. They just they popped out of nowhere and just like would kill you. Oh jeez! You know what yeah. game I wanted to stream? What's up? Remember remember number munchers and word munchers? No, yeah yeah yeah. I used to play those. Yeah. I want to stream number munchers so bad. I mean, how many levels could there be? I guess like because it doesn't go like especially the easy levels. It's like multiples of two. Right. Plus, I can show off how smart I am to everybody. I have a <laughs> certification in arithmetic. That's show funny. off my, my certification here. But I get like the baddies, the troggles, I think they're called. They come in a lot quicker and, they're, and there's a lot more of them. So I guess that's that's where they get you. Yeah. It's not because very rarely is because you eat the wrong number or a word. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to avoid those things. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was more, uh, I, I enjoyed uh, number munchers more than word munchers, I would say. It wins for me. Um, I like both. I like both. Um, there, there are a lot of cool games back in the day. Um, told you about Willy Beamish and stuff like that, but yeah, just ch check out check out Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Um, Love to says Joe Namath is in the Hall of Fame. Come on, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, I mean, he made history. Uh, you know, but then again, I, you know, his defense, I guess, like didn't score oh, a lot of points oh. in that game. That strengthens my argument, right? <laughs> Yeah, but some people would argue that he doesn't belong in the Hall of Fame because like the rest yeah, of his career is so pedestrian. Yeah, it's, it's, a different, it's a different time though. Um, Mike says if the Chiefs win next year, Carson Wentz should go in. He'll be quarterback on two different Super Bowl winners. Exactly, exactly. Right. Throw him in there, man. Uh, Lotte says total black and sleeping yeah, is the best. Is. Uh, and I also recommend um, the white noise machines. Those are so good, uh, well, especially with two kids. Like you, that is a necessity, but. Um, the white noise machines. I can't sleep with, without them now. Like if if I go to Vegas, um, like I don't have to worry about any kids or anything like that. But I still need the white noise machine, and so I just put it up my on my phone, and uh, yeah, it's great. I can't sleep in silence either. It's yeah. impossible. Yeah, I used to be able to, not anymore, and not I can't. Yeah, it's, uh, it would it would actually creep me out. I would think. Yeah, um, so. uh, Lefty says we actually bought Alaska from Russia. That's correct. Um, Yes, yes, we did. Uh, and that what Slavic was literally the first slaves. Um, yeah, I think that they, the Coalition of Communities of Color, classified Slavics as uh, as people of color because of the like exactly that because of, like the, the the persecution and stuff like that, the bad history that they went through. Um, it has to do with like the oppressed versus the oppressors and stuff like that. And so like the like the Slavic people went through like went through so many bad things like like most recently 80 years ago we saw what happened you know uh so uh you know it's uh I, so like so i am classified as non-white here so <laughs> uh, it's it's funny uh russian is multi-ethnic yeah uh in television so love to eat, recognizes in television uh there, there was some good games on there there's some I, I forget the game but like you'd have to like climb to the top of the tower to save uh the girl, um, I don't know. Like, I think like it was, Kong. It's, it's like King Kong, right? Like, yeah, King Kong, right? You have to like yeah. climb to the top of the tower, but it was like an actual tower, not like things you jump over, like barrels, right? Like, right, right. It like I looked like you. an actual tower and like people throwing stuff out of the tower. It was, um, it was a pretty good game, so uh, it was a good system. Um, Neo Geo Samurai Showdown, um, and then Tron on television. I didn't play Tron. That was good. I, I I miss the system a lot. It was good. 
Um, and then Lofty says, one. "Can't sleep without a fan." Glad I'm not the only one. Yeah, I have I have yeah. a ceiling fan. I have a a unit fan, and I have my white noise machine. I have so many noises. Like, <laughs> like there could be like a bomb going off outside. I wouldn't hear it with all the white noise I have. <laughs> I can relate. I can relate. Yeah. Um, oh, before we go right? to what did you say? I was gonna say we're two hours in. We should get to the Game of Thrones, I guess. Well, I also want to touch on uh, the first uh, Super Bowl bet I made. Oh yeah, go for it. Go for it. Um, so I so I've recommended some ideas here. I haven't made an official bet though, uh, which is why there's nothing on the site yet. However, that changed tonight. I thought I'd hop on this because I noticed when I was looking through Fanduel, I was like, Dallas Cowboys are thirteen to, to one. The Eagles are sixteen to one. I'm like, what in the world is this? Like. In what universe are the Cowboys better than the Eagles right now? I don't understand. Um, and I think that, like, I feel like the Sharps might catch on to this and be like, wait a second, the Eagles are better than the Cowboys. They should maybe flip. Um, so I uh, I made a bet on the Eagles. Not a 16-1 to on Caesars. They are 17-1. to So I bet the Eagles. I, I really like them this year. They added Saquon Barkley to their offense and their offense was already explosive and they get, they get Saquon Barkley defensively. They were terrible last year, but they got Chase, uh, Cha- Chauncey Gardner Johnson back. They have a real defensive coordinator and, um, and Vic Fangio. And I, I imagine that most of their picks are going to be made on defense in the draft. Um, so th- I think their defense can be a lot better. The only like worry concern, and it's not that much of a concern is that Jason Kelsey retired, but the Eagles plan for this. They drafted Cam Jurgens, They drafted um, Landon Dickerson, like, I feel like their offensive line is so great. So um, <clears throat> I think that uh, I think this number should be like 10 to one. Um, they are, they are one of the best teams in the NFL. I think you could, I think you could argue the best team in the NFC. I mean, obviously Niners, but um, we almost, we saw the Niners almost lose to the Lions and the Packers in the playoffs last year. Um, and uh, I, I think the Eagles improved this, improved themselves. Like Saquon Barkley is such a great dimension that they've been had. Um, and now they have that in addition to like Jalen Hurts and AJ Brown and uh, Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard and the great offensive line. Like their, their offense is top three and their defense can be a lot better. So, um, yeah, I like the team. Um, so to quote uh, Kevin Riley, the great Kevin Riley, the great announcer for the Eagles, my Philadelphia Eagles um, are uh, <laughs> my my uh, my first official bet to win the Super Bowl 17 to one. I, I like it too. I was over here looking though. At, so the Texans get stuff on digs and now they're 15 to one, huh? Mm-hmm. What do you think of that? It's not a great know. number. It's not a great number. Um, Cause like the AFC is so difficult. The, the Eagles have a much easier path. And I know like the lions are good. The Packers are going to be good this year. Niners. But they're so like, there are that many good teams in the NFC. You know, um, like that that division's super easy. Like I, I think the Redskins are gonna be better, but the Giants are gonna be horrible and the Cowboys are are taking a step back. Whereas like the Texans have to deal with like the Jaguars are gonna be back, the Colts almost made the playoffs last year. It's a tough division, and like the conference as a whole is very difficult. Um, so I think like if the Texans were in the NFC, I'd have more interest, but in the AFC it's pretty tough. Although I I do think they have a chance. But like, if you're looking at teams 15 to one, I think I, th- I think I go with the Bengals. Um, like Joe Burrow's gonna be back. Uh, offensive line should be better, but we keep saying that. Um, but yeah, uh, I think of all the teams in the teens in the AFC, I like the Bengals. Like Eagles and Bengals are like two teams I would definitely bet right now. I've, I haven't done that with the Bengals. I, I don't know if 15 to one's the best number, um, but I, Eagles 17 to one I think is is a really good number. We talked about this on the show, I think, a, a couple weeks ago. But I like the Jaguars at forty-four to one too. There, mm-hmm. I think that's that's a little bit intriguing. I mean, they the wheels fell off last yeah. year, and I thought that, but I, I think they're definitely going to be better. They they probably should have won the the division, yeah. but Lawrence really played hurt, and it showed. And I know I said this before, but at forty-four to one, like I, I still think they're a playoff team. It's you know, unless something happens, it's going to be. Uh, you know, something catastrophic happens. It's going to be Jacksonville and Houston vying for that division title. So I, I just think at forty-four to one, I think that's that's that number is quite the overreaction for for what happened to them at the end of the season, and maybe deserved. But I think people are kind of like, oh, they're the Jags; they suck again, sort of sentiment. So I, I like the the value of it. I, I like the value too. I just I just don't know if I trust Doug Peterson. Um, but 
I, I I do agree. I think that's a really good number. And th- they were eight and three last year, and they fell apart because of injuries. Like Trevor Lawrence was the Black Knight from the Monty Python movies. Like it was different injury sure. every week. Um, yeah, it, like yeah. all of his limbs are falling off. Slew with the five fifty five. Thank you thank so much, Slew. Really appreciate it. So thank you. He says I'm trying to figure out Conrad, my son, uh, over under on next year's Easter egg hunt at the church with the dubious clergy. Uh, thirty five and a half. <laughs> uh, so yeah, my son. I wrote this jerks of the week entry about it. His first Easter egg hunt last year. He only he was a month and three. Uh, he's sorry, he was a year and three months old. So um, he only picked up four eggs, and he was going against like three and four year olds. I felt like he was that match. So my wife yeah. and I trained him uh, heading into Easter, and like we set up these Easter eggs, and like he found them, but like we didn't tell him to uh, not, to collect as many eggs as possible before opening them up, because like. Uh, this time, like this past Easter, he like grabbed an egg very quickly and then he opened it up to take the chocolate. We're like, no, 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 get get all the eggs. And so I think he got like 20, 25 eggs or something like that. Um, <laughs> and so like the over under 35 and a half, I think he's going to go way over 35 and a half. But uh, Dubious Clergy oh. is uh, it's from the same entry where um, so my sister-in-law was like, it's like, yeah, I, I hope I don't have to talk to the the pastor. I'm like, why? And she's like, it's like, yeah, he's... Um, you know, there there were rumors that he, he that he did something with a fourteen year old girl. Um, I'm like, oh really? And he, she's like, yeah, but he's also gay. I'm like, what? I'm like, what? Wait, 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 wait a second. <laughs> wait, does he like dudes or does he like little girls? Like, <laughs> what's yeah, going on yeah. here? Like, so I I don't know. Like, you always hear these rumors. Like something I don't know. Like, I feel like someone who may not like him started or the rumor and like, but it could be true. Like, who knows? But he actually is gay because he had he had like a male partner. So like like why would he why would he molest a girl like I just I don't know but um so like I, I was I thought that story was weird because like like why would a gay guy molest a fourteen year old girl I don't I don't yeah know. that's why I don't go to church anymore <laughs> <laughs> I don't I mean I don't I I don't go to church either it's, this is my like my my wife's side of the family their church um which is where like all the Easter egg hunts and stuff happen but. Um, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I, 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 I grew, I'm not I grew, gonna... up, I grew up Catholic, so I had to go to, yeah, as, as I explained, the, the, uh, what was it last year? I was telling about like the confessions, the, and, the, and the, I always went face to face confession. So, yes, yeah, I remember I went, I went through the Catholic ringer, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It seems like in that church, like, seems like all the people there were nice. I, I never had, um, bad interactions. Oh, although last year, <clears throat> so I got, I was standing, like, I was just waiting for the Easter egg hunt to begin. This old lady turns around. This is also in Jersey of the Week. She like she turns around and is like she's like, "Did you touch my butt?" I'm like, "No." It's just, this what? woman's like seventy. I'm like, "Why would I touch your butt?" And and like and then she's like, "Are you sure?" I'm like, "I'm like, no, I didn't touch your butt." And then like the guy next to her, he's like, "Oh, I touched it." And then like it ended up being her son. I'm like, why are you touching your mom's butt? Like, what is <laughs> like what is weird people, man? <laughs> Don't go back there. <laughs> <laughs> this must have been like awkward at, at the Easter dinner. It was like, "Hey, Sonny, you remember you touched my butt in church?" Oh, geez. <laughs> hey, don't go back there. <laughs> I don't know. Most of the other people are nice, so though. I appreciate I the donation there, Slew. Yeah, thank you so much, Slew. Really, again, really appreciate it. Um, so, uh, Love to Eat says uh, he likes the Rams at thirty-two to one. I would like them as well if Andrew Aaron Donald hadn't retired. Like, that's the problem with that. Um, I, I love their offense, but without Donald, that defense is going to be a, much worse. Um, but they could do it. I, I don't like it's not the worst bet. So, um, uh, can you still hear you, your your picture froze on my end? Can you still hear me and stuff? I can still hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, keep on yeah, going. You're good. I don't know why my picture froze, but uh, let's see. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm still. I'm like hold, I'm holding my my arm over my head. Um, <laughs> oh, there you go. Now you now you brought it. Now you brought it back down. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I didn't do anything. I don't know. I'm, I'm still frozen too. You're not. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, we can we can keep we can keep talking. It's. I mean, it's fine with me. I just want to make sure that you can hear me. You know. Yeah, 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 I can still hear you. Um, the boss saying so. Eagles minus one and a half versus the Packers week one. Yes, that line is up. It's the first the first line of the year. Um, and uh, yeah, so. I think I like the Eagles, but it's in Brazil on a Friday, which screws up our our uh, super contest um, meeting. Um, 
I don't like these Friday games, I gotta tell you. But uh yeah. it's the new it's divorce package <laughs> two point Yes. Absolutely. Uh <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't I don't know what they're thinking here, but um I guess I like the Eagles. I don't, I don't really see an edge right now. It's the line's about right. I, I both teams are gonna be really good. Um so what are, what are your thoughts on this one? Who who do the Eagles play in week two? Oh, no, they didn't they didn't announce it yet. Oh, okay. This this is the, this is the only game available because it's the only game that they've been out so far. If the Eagles lose that first game, I'm interested to see who they play week two. You know how we love to get our week two of reactions in. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Especially if we think the the Eagles are going to be. Remember, oh my God, that, uh, a couple seasons ago, the year the Eagles made the Super Bowl, that week two game against the Vikings. Remember, I came over to your house and we were talking about it since freaking July, man. Yep. That Vikings, we we knew. Oh my God. That was I've never been more sure about that game. Other than that, that uh, Eagles. <laughs> so it involves the Eagles. That Eagles Cardinals NFC Championship game that we were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. I knew for sure. I would never been more sure of a pick. Remember, because everyone was all over Justin Jefferson, and yeah. you had really liked the Eagles to win the Super Bowl before the season started, and people didn't realize how good they were. That was an easy win. Um, yeah, uh, that yeah, that was my pick of the month. Um, I love that game and it was never in doubt. Um, so yeah, hopefully yeah. we get another one. I feel like the loser of this game is going to be a great bet to week, week uh, uh, to win week two. Um, yeah. And, 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 and I, I think more so the, if the Eagles lose, they're an even better bet than if it if, were the Packers, because to end the season, I mean, people are pretty high on the Packers. I feel like, and they're pretty low on the Eagles. I mean, the, Eagles right. were, I mean, the wheels, the wheels fell off. So, I think if the Eagles lose, the sentiment is is more like, oh yeah, like they're they're never going to be the same as the team that what made it to the Super Bowl. You saw how terrible they were at the end of the year, but surprise, you know they just played, they, you know they played a really good Green Bay team. So if, if the Eagles lose that game, I'd be interested to see what those Week Two lines look look like, no matter who they play. So yeah, I agree with that. Um, love to you asking, are you a horror fan? There's a movie called Easter Sunday. I saw that. Is it on Netflix? I, I saw a preview for that. Um, I did not see it, but I do love I do love horror movies for sure. Um, As do I. I Easter Sun is it is it like a slasher film or is it like a? I think it's a slasher film with a guy dressed up as like. A, okay, so it's like one yeah. of the one of the. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll have to I'll have to check it out. Yeah, usually a little uh, bit of that goes a long way for me. Those yeah. types, but uh, let's see. Says uh, Quacky <laughs> went to Catholic school and I had to do the right to take communion. Um, me too, man. Yeah. Uh, and then he says, if Cooper DeGene was black, he'd get comp to Legarius Sneed. Uh, perhaps, yeah. I mean, he tested super well athletically, so I, you know, it sounds like he's going to go first round. Um, all right, so let's let's get to Game of Thrones. So let's close out the show. You watched season two, season two, episodes six and seven. I thought two fantastic episodes. Uh, for oh, those yeah. who you don't remember, season uh, season two, episode six featured. Um, uh, the the reenactment of uh, January sixth, where uh, Joffrey got crap thrown on him, and then he's like, "Kill them all, kill them all!" And then like people yeah. started a riot, and then like uh, and the Hound had to like uh, beat up some people to save Sansa, and then Tyrion, with his great performance, slapped Joffrey and said, uh, "We've had vicious kings, we've had idiot kings, we've never had a vicious idiot for a king." Uh, one of uh, one of the best lines. Um, and then Jon Snow meets Egret for the first time, uh, and we get the the classic line: "You know nothing, Jon Snow. You've only heard it once. You're going to hear it much more. Um, you know nothing, Jon Snow." One of the iconic lines of Game of Thrones, and um, yeah, so we had that. And then Episode Seven, we had the uh, well, the ending was uh, was pretty uh, sad. You know, you had you, you said Brand, you like Bran Stark, and you saw you saw what Theon did to him and his brother. They uh, they flayed them pretty well, so uh, mm-hmm. I guess uh, rest in peace, Bran Stark and Rick and Stark. Lots of uh, lots of death on the show, huh? Yeah, yeah. It's it, I'll tell you what. Starting with episode six, that I mean Tyrion. I, I hope they don't kill him off soon. You know, I got attached to Ned Stark in the first season. Yep. But uh, the best character on the show, and as I said before, and the, I actually got goosebumps from that scene because it's like you knew, like Joffrey knew he was right in that. You know when he said that he didn't he didn't push back too much at it and I thought it was uh, uh what a, what a great scene I thought it was the best scene of the of the series thus far um 
but but yeah uh let's see i'm looking through i'm looking through my notes yeah the egret girl she's uh she's sly man i dig it she's uh <laughs> i mean i love see- i love her yeah yeah so she's gonna be i guess i'm assuming she's gonna play a big part like moving forward at least for a little bit yeah she's um she was on Downton Abbey uh, in season one, and she she at, she got off the show because she got this this role in Game of Thrones. Um, and she's uh, I, I like her as an actress. I, I think she's like super attractive too. So um, and and like I love how like the back and forth of her and Jon Snow, the fact that she teases him so much, and her like her reading of that classic line, uh, you know nothing, Jon Snow. So this is so great. Yeah. Uh... I mean, I think she is pretty. I'm not. I don't. I'm not really into redheads too much, but you know, yeah. She. I mean, she is really pretty. And I'll tell you what. It's just like Jon Snow is really getting a, a crash course in the power of boners over here. This is like this. This show is like it, there's there's no there's like no boundaries to it. It's 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 really something. Um, but I, I'm I'm really interested to see now. Um, I, I think I think Joffrey's going to get killed off soon is is what i think is good i i, I hope so it, it would really seem that way but i don't know is that just like an obvious choice am i getting i don't think there are any obvious choices for people to get killed in game of thrones i mean they they killed off the main character in season one right um, right so but, and, yeah and i'm really interested to see what else uh unfolds here with uh with Arya and and, and tywin lannister that's that's really interesting and i can't believe she so the the I can't the guard that she the um the person she set free to uh, the second death a Marie Lorch yeah okay yeah the, the the timing was uh was absolutely perfect that was <laughs> that was a really cool part too I was like oh damn what's gonna happen here this is uh so um I, I'm interested to see how that dynamic between those two is is gonna develop as well I but, love yeah, it, I love the scenes with with Tywin and Arya I could watch an entire show with just them. There's just so yeah. much tension, and there's such great actors together. I, I think it's I think it's remarkable. And and then they added Littlefinger in. in yeah, that. I was gonna say I love that too. That was Episode that was seven. so cool. Do you she think Littlefinger recognized her? I think it's possible, and I think he's smart enough to not say anything if he did. No, oh, of course, yeah, uh, yeah. I think yeah. If Littlefinger knew who that was, he wouldn't have said anything. Yeah. Nothing about his body language like would indicate like it wasn't very obvious that he he knew. Mm-hmm. So if, if if he did know, I think that's that's uh, a testament to how good you know the the acting the acting is because mm-hmm. there wasn't like like an obvious like eye contact or or any any of that. But he did you know look in her direction a couple times. He definitely took notice, but didn't get a clear look. It seems yeah, like, it so. absolutely was not obvious. But I felt like. I, I don't know. He made he had this look at one point. He's like, "Huh?" And he's like, "Could that?" I I, I wonder if he was like thinking, "He's like, could that be?" You know? Um, yeah, yeah. So I don't know if he knew for sure, but I think he had a suspicion that it was. Because hmm. like you know, Ari went missing. Where could she be? You know? Right. Exactly. Exactly. So um, yeah, I'm interested to see how how all that is uh, how all that is, is going to get play out. I'll tell you what, the star kid and, and Greyjoy, they look, they look the same to me. You think? <laughs> yeah. Like sometimes it's hard for me to tell them apart. I mean, I don't think anymore, but I got confused earlier. They, they look very similar. Okay. Also, uh, I'm just, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's confusing. Cause like when you first start watching the show, like you think Theon's one of the sons. Um, and then you realize he's not. Cause like they, they, they say he's like a ward and whatnot, but like, but like when you start the show, like you think he's one of the kids, but um, yeah, so he's not. What do you think of uh, what do you think of Hodor? I've got to ask you that. Oh the big, yeah, the big guy the, who carries uh, Bran around. Yeah, it helps Bran. Uh, yeah, I mean they say he's like a half wit, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's all I've ever heard him say is his name. Hodor, yeah, yeah. Hodor, right. Hodor, I don't know. Hodor. It, it, well, it's not, I'm going to guess because you're asking me. Like, there's there's more to him than that meets the eye, sort of thing. Oh yeah. Oh really? Yeah. A oh, lot wow. more. Okay. A lot more. Um, really? Okay. I'm interested yes. to see that. So uh, this is this is not going to spoil anything for you because it's only in the book. It's not in the show. Uh, actually, no, it might be in the show. Never mind. Never mind. Um, I'll, I'll I'll leave it out. But uh, it like some of the stuff you see in the. 
in, in the in the book you don't see on the show. Like for example, um, like like the the older Stark boy, uh, Rob Stark, he sometimes can warg into his direwolf. Um, you know, warg means like he can he can look he can like you know how like Bran has those dreams that he's inside his wolf. Um, right, like right. they all the kids do that except for Sansa because her wolf obviously died. Like all the kids yeah. have that power, uh, all the Starks. But for some oh. reason, in the show it's only Bran. Um, but yeah, like so so you have like different powers that way. Um, it, like, even Jon Snow with with his White Wolf like ghost, um, he has that power too. So, um, oh. yeah. So, but but like yeah, I wanted I wanted to get your opinion on Hodor, and I also wanted to ask you: Do you have any uh, any further thoughts on who Jon Snow's mom might be? Because I you know. I don't know if it's these two episodes or the previous two episodes, but they they um they did talk about it. Uh, oh, it was it was because uh, Catelyn Stark talked about it with Jamie, or no? Jamie said it's like, hey, the, the honorable Ned Stark. He's like, I'm more honorable than your husband was because I've only slept with one woman. Oh, don't tell me it's Catelyn Stark's sister. <laughs> I won't say I won't say yes or no. But okay, I just, okay. I just, I, I just want to hear your prediction. Yeah, that, that's that's my choice. You know, the one that has the the weird kid that's sucking on her boob all the time. So you, you think Ned Stark slept with her? <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. <laughs> all right. Well, you guys sure to hear first. Uh, <laughs> Lisa, Lisa Aaron is uh, John Snow's mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, because she'd have to be a little bit older, right? Uh, why? Well, I, don't know. I mean, how old do you think? Like. No, oh, I don't know. She she could be Catelyn. She could be Catelyn Stark's age. Like, yeah, I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna stick with my original answer. Am right. I gonna find that out soon? No, I mean they re- they reveal it um, in the final episode that you'll watch or you'll be told to watch, which is uh, so episode nine of season six is called Battle of ba- Battle of the Bastards, and mm-hmm. then the final the final episode in that season is when you find out who Jon Snow's mom is. Oh wow! Okay, and so, then I'll yeah. be done watching it for. Right. I won't go any further. Yep, that's that's one of the final scenes you ever see, unless unless you keep watching it, which no one would recommend. But you know, I, I suppose you might want to find out how bad it got at the end. I don't know. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I feel like I could go either way, but I I will heed your advice. I, I'm I'm thinking at this at this point. If you tell me it's terrible, I won't I won't keep going. It's it's a completely different show. It's like, yeah. yeah, you get same actors, same characters, but it's completely different. Everything right, changes. Right. So it's so bad. Um, by the way, uh, the Jamie, I brought up the Jamie stuff. That I thought Jamie's uh, performance um, with Catelyn Stark was was great. Not not only with Catelyn Stark. Remember when he was talking to his cousin, and then he ended up yeah. killing his cousin. Um, oh, okay, that's who that was. Yeah, yeah, he was he was really going in on her. That was it. Was I, I agree? It was a fantastic performance. Yeah, and oddly enough, that was only the second time he's been on the show this season. Um, but like, yeah, yeah, they, I was, they, yeah, I didn't. I almost didn't recognize him at first. Yeah, because I mean, he's been captive for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, yeah, I thought that was great. And he, he, Jamie has one scene with Brienne uh, down the road, uh, which is like one of the best scenes uh, in Game of Thrones. Uh, it's so oh, really. Great. It's okay. so good. He's he's in a he's like in a bathtub with, not with her, but like uh, like right next to her, um, mm-hmm. and they they have this dialogue. He has this long mon- monologue, of like because he's the Kingslayer, right? He's he's the one who killed the Mad King, and so he talks about it and like what went through his mind and everything like that. And it's just man, it's just terrific. I think it I think it's oh, okay. in season three. I think it's coming up fairly soon. Oh, okay, um, okay. For you, so I, I, it was great. So I, you're gonna like that as well. If you, if you like this performance here, you're gonna like that a lot uh, coming up. Okay, excellent. Yeah. yeah, these last two episodes are definitely my my favorite two so far. I would say. Yeah. So it's it is it's really it's picking up steam here for me. Yeah, Battle of the Blackwater is coming up. That's one of my wife's favorite favorite episodes. Uh, it's uh it's this it's the episode nine of this season. So. Oh, okay, okay. I think I did see that come uh, approaching soon. Approaching. Yeah, and as you can imagine, that's uh, Stannis is going to be attacking. So you know, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a great, right, great right. episode. So. Yeah, no, I look forward to it. I look forward to it. Yeah, Cinder asking, oh, so we good. are we hedging? Um, yeah, this is one of the first things I talk about. Um, we're I'm going to do it live. I'm not not hedging right now. It's too congested at the top. Let, let me bring this up again. 
you have Shuffler at seven, then you have Morikawa at six, you have Homa at five, Abair at four, and then DeChambeau at the three. It's like it's pretty congested. It's tough to hedge right now, but I think like we'll get some clarity as like in the first few holes. Um, maybe someone will fall off. Maybe Homa or Mar- Morikawa will blow up. Maybe we won't, we won't need a hedge. Um, but I will have updates live uh, on Sunday. Um, so uh, definitely look for that on Twitter. And um, if I have a chance, uh, I'll post it on the site as well. But definitely on Twitter. So uh, to, to recap that. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. Thanks so much for everyone uh, for watching and commenting. Just really appreciate it. Uh, especially re- appreciate Carmen for the $5 super sticker and Slew for the 555 super Thank chat. You. Thank you. You guys, uh, you guys mean a lot to us, like so much. Um, like it, it really helps us out because YouTube ads pay nothing. So, um, you guys really help to keep the show going, and just want to say, like, it's it's we're really thankful for that. Um, so yeah, uh, please hit like, subscribe, comment below, share this video. Uh, visit the link in the description for the merch store, uh, or go buy my book on Amazon, Jerks of the College Years. Uh, you might find it funny if you like Jerks of the Week. Uh, uh, Tom, uh, do you want to plug anything? Perhaps your show. Yeah, we can put the Twitch on. I'm going to be, you know, in like the next 30 minutes, I'm going to be doing a late night Twitch stream on there. Nice. At quacky underscore T. It's just me bantering and playing Super Mario. And we played some Batman Arkham Asylum the other day, but I'll probably just do some Mario Kaizo. But uh, yeah, at quacky T. I'm uh, on Twitter as well. Uh, give me a follow and hope to see you out there. Appreciate everyone's support here and there. Yeah, I'll be I'll be commenting there as well. So if you guys want to keep talking, I'll I'll pop in as well. Um, very entertaining streams, uh, I think that, that you have some time. And hopefully, one hopefully sometime soon you'll play uh, um, uh, advanced, Dungeon, advanced no advanced Dungeons and Dragons, uh, the, the first oh, right. uh, the <laughs> first survival horror game ever made. Um, yeah, right, right. I'll have, so, to, I'll have to find it, and uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll try to get that make that happen. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I'm still frozen for some reason, but uh yeah, let's uh let's, let's get out of here. Uh again, once again, guys, thanks so much. Uh thanks so much to Carmen and Slu. Uh Tom, always uh always looking forward to these shows and they never disappoint. Always uh love to talk to you. So, uh we'll we'll see okay. you either ne- on Thursday or Saturday next week. We'll 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 head and we'll uh, figure out the schedule Saturday. and or yeah. Saturday. We'll figure out the schedule. Uh but yeah, uh we'll be back on Tuesday with Jacob. I'm sure we'll have some draft stuff to talk about, but um, yeah, uh, have a great rest of the weekend, everyone. Good luck with your golf bets and or Eagles Super Bowl bet if you want to follow me um, and uh, have a good night. Okay.